This week, one beta ends as another one begins as Valve releases family sharing as the Steam Music beta begins. News from South Park, the Stick of Truth continues with outrage from policymakers and gamers alike over censorship in much of the world. We'll take your comments on these events on the show where every gamer has a voice. Orange Lounge Radio. Hello, my friends out there on the internet, and welcome back to another week of the show where every gamer has a voice. It is Orange Lounge Radio, live with episode number 542 of our show for this March the 2nd of 2014. My name is Rob Roberts, and over the next few hours, we'll be talking about video games, gaming culture, and the gamer lifestyle with my co host Say hello to Dark Sakura or Jamie Summers. Hi. How you doing? I'm happy. You're happy. Good. That's that's good. If you're happy and you know what, clap your hands. Clap May I have a little more, please? Y- yes. <laughs> Just as long as you're going to be okay to drive. We, this uh, is me. We, hmm. we decided to crack open a bottle of wine here in the studio. So, uh, you know, that's how things go. That's how we roll here at OLR. But drink responsibly, kids. Yes. It's a three-hour show, so we got a lot of time. I just made uh, the heart fingers at Rob. <laughs> All right. And joining us via the Skype line, say hello, everybody, to Loki Oler. How you doing, Loki? I'm doing good. Good, good. Uh, what's new? Not much. Yeah? Just, uh, just uh, put in a cat door today. Put in a what? A cat door. A cat door. Oh, you're being quite homely while you're around, being the man of the house. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, because the cat was annoying me and kept whining at the door. And sure enough, I put the door in. She doesn't give a shit. She's, <laughs> like, not even bothering with the door anymore. Uh, so you, you, you should, you should have made the cat door so that the cat can go out, but the cat can't, can't get back in. Uh, actually, funny you should say that, there's actually an option on there to do that. Or you can have her come in only, uh, you can lock it one way, so it's kind of funny. Awesome. Well, there you go. Uh, well, I do want to say hi to everybody and, uh, you know, kind of, I, I try to do this once in a while, every few months or so, but sort of reintroduce ourselves. So if it is your first time listening to this show, welcome. And just a quick reintroduction. Uh, my name is Rob, that's Jamie. And joining us on the Skype line tonight is Loki or Matt. And, uh, he's on the Skype line because him and Mrs. Loki just had a baby about, where are we at now? About it's over a month ago now at this point, right? Or just about a month ago? It's like six weeks. Wow. Time flies, but uh, he's still on baby leave. Usually we're all in the same studio, but, uh, you know, obviously we want Loki to take time while the wife is is healing and all that stuff. So um, usually, though, we're all in the same room. And about 10 years ago, we all met at a local arcade playing a music-based video game. Uh, Dance Dance Revolution, Beat Mania, those types of things. Um, we would meet up once once a week or so at the arcade, um, just like you would with a fighting game community or a racing game community. And afterwards, we go to the diner across the street, sit around the table, and just talk about gaming because we were all gaming nerds. So here we are, 12 years later. We're doing that same thing virtually. And thanks to the internet, we have the world's biggest diner table via our Skype line, our Twitter, and the chat room, live.vognetwork.com. Because after all, we are the show where every gamer has a voice. We are live at 6 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern, every Sunday, right after the Bobby Blackwolf Show at the Voice Geeks Network, vognetwork.com. By the way, Rob, hmm. since someone complained, sup, bitches? So someone complained that you weren't using your usual tagline. It's not really my usual. I've done it twice. Well, you said a couple weeks ago it was going to be your new tagline. Okay, now it's my... Okay, sup, bitches? Stop disappointing the people out there. you know what? (laughs) Stop being a false icon. I'm kidding. I reject that statement. Uh, Thank you guys so much. Uh, Whether you're listening to us on the podcast feed or via Stitcher or whatever, or listening to us live, uh, we're up against, you know, the Oscars as being a live Sunday night show. We typically seem to go up, up against like every big American thing, you know, every award show, every Super Bowl sports thon thing seems to be on a Sunday night. But you guys are loyal listeners. You're here with us. So uh, hoping we can include you guys as much as possible as we go through tonight's show. Um, let's talk about our kickoff topic real quick. Since since the Oscars are going on, after all, I mean, I'm going to acknowledge that it's a big movie night, although I'm going to be honest. I didn't see a single one of the movies nominated. I saw maybe like three movies last year. Like, it's, what I've was just, nominated? I've just become that. I don't know. Everybody's talking about Gravity mm, and the twel- see it. Twelve Years a Slave is didn't the other one, and American Hustle, which I should have seen because I do love Jennifer Lawrence. She's perfect. I am pissed off though that Saving Mr. Banks didn't show up. 
because it was really good. I don't even know what that is. Is that, that, is that, is that, that the Disney one? That was the Disney one. one. Okay, yeah, I didn't see that. Tom Hanks should have freaking won everything for being Walt Disney. Sorry. I used I used to watch the Oscars every year. Then I got this show. Mm. <laughs> oh, well, it's fine. I prefer doing this. So yeah. the Oscars are the Oscars. Yeah. But it does beg the question, since we are a video game show, this is usually the time of year where we talk about video game movies. And the question I want to ask everybody is, you know, and this goes to our chat room as well over at live.vognetwork.com. What's it going to take, or is it ever going to happen, where a video game, or excuse me, a movie based on a video game can actually be a contender for an Oscar? Because let's be real, most of the video game movies they've put out have been stinkers. There's only been a few few good ones, passable ones. Uh, the original Mortal Kombat, I think most people agree, it wasn't bad. Uh, mm. Resident Evil, depending on what you're into, seems like most people... And they're not quite game canon anyway. Yeah, they're really not. First Silent Hill, I really like that. Um, I, I didn't even mind the second one. It wasn't really for everybody, but let's be real. That game was never going to get like an Oscar. It's not really an Oscar flick. It's a popcorn flick. But we do see that the caliber of writing in some games these days is really, really good. Uh, of course, I would be a bad fanboy if I didn't throw out the fact that Mass Effect has some really great writing. <sighs> if we... If we kind of overlook that ending thing with number three, I mean, they did go back and fix it, and then the and Citadel DLC. And butchering some of the characterization. Yeah, so we'll just we'll, just, we'll overlook the imperfections and, and say, you know, overall Mass Effect had some great writing. And who goes to bed in their armor, really? A lot of people loving Dragon Age as well. Um, not to put all the focus on Bioware, because certainly tons of people are really enjoying The Last of Us, uh, even Beyond Two Souls. You know, it's kind of like a playable type of game, uh, or a you know, playable type of movie that is a game. So my question is. Do we think we'll ever see the type of movie that actually gets nominated for Oscars? I'm not talking about just necessarily like special effects Oscars. That's that's one thing. I'm talking about like writing, uh, heaven forbid, acting, or even a picture nomination. Could we ever get that type of caliber movie out of a video game? Or are movies based on video games forever pigeonholed into, well, they're going to suck? Uh... I think it would really just take having the right director behind it and having the right people in it. And I think that would turn a lot of it around because I mean, I mean if you actually going back to the Silent Hill one, despite, you know, it being really following more of the the game formula with the movie, the acting in it was really freaking top-notch. It really was good. I mean, look who was in it. Had some of the best, you know, actors, you know, especially uh what's her face that played um the the bad la- the big bad lady, not that played Dahlia, but played um, Alice Krieg, the board queen. Oh my god, I love her. I she is true. perfectly creepy. I I wanted all of those performances to be nominated because they were really good. Well, I think they got nominated in like science fiction awards and things yeah. that are a little more niche. So we can't say that the movie was completely ignored. But obviously, there were a lot of people that didn't like the movie. Yeah, we'll screw which, them. Well, I I understand some of it was a little cheesy. The little girl was a little bit just, Silent Hill, Silent Hill. <laughs> that, okay, that part was. <laughs> so it, it, it had its imperfections. Mm. But the rest of it was awesome. <laughs> uh, Loki, what do you think? Um, the, the only chance I think that they have is like, you know, maybe if that Minecraft movie comes out later on, because it's being done by like, was it the guys that did the Lego movie? Mm-hmm. I think that could win like maybe best animated movie or something. Okay. But, um,. I don't know. There, a lot of the people that bring on, you know, video game properties, they don't really take it seriously. Mm-hmm. So I just, I don't know if you would really see like Oscar-winning performances out of that stuff. Let's go to over, over to our chat room over at live.vognetwork.com and some of the responses. First, we have some other people naming movies that really weren't bad that were based on video games. Um, Akuma JP says the first Tomb Raider movie, which actually might have gotten uh, somebody would have to look that up, but I think it might have gotten Oscar nods, but in like the special effects type of categories, yeah. like you know Angelina Jolie wasn't nominated, or I mean, neither less- was her leg. <laughs> um, Dungeon Buster says Prince of Persia wasn't too bad either. I forgot about that one. That's I think that's the problem. Um, Rageinator brings up Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. Um, and some other comments on this topic. Uh, Tech2030 says a good video game movie doesn't take the source material as gospel. They need to tweak it to work as an actual movie. And we, we do see, I mean, it's not like there isn't movies based on other material. That's all. They have a whole category at the Oscars for that because they have the best screenplay original and best screenplay based on some type of source. And almost always it's a book. 
either a memoir or a fiction book or what have you. Once in a while, it might even be like a newspaper article or, you know, there might be some other type of inspiration. But it's not like there isn't a category where a, put my fanboy hat on, Mass Effect movie couldn't fit into. But the question is, are we ever going to see something of that caliber? I don't know. Um, Brad from Pod Culture suggests Bioshock would be a great candidate, I think, for, for that type of even, movie. Even though I'm not in the fandom, I think that um, of all of them, Assassin's Creed 2 would actually make a good story. Mm. Because you're, it would be historical fiction having to deal with some of the most fucked up politics ever in Renaissance Europe. Speaking of um, fandoms, I've always been surprised you're not really into. Bioshock, like I know you downloaded the games, checked them out, but I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I haven't had time to... F I started Infinite, remember, right before I started right. at, And I know you're uh, a big fan of, like, art direction in games. And, like, when I think of games with, like, A-plus art direction, Bioshock Infinite's, like, whoop, up I there. Know, it, I have the game. I've started playing it. Yeah. It's just, you know, with me working at, sure. you know, Locat. I understand. I haven't been able to... I understand. Um, Degenerate Johnny in chat is, is placing his bets. Degenerate Johnny says the first video game movie that will win an Oscar will be the Warcraft movie because Blizzard never settles less than the best. I, I could definitely see Warcraft. I mean, depending on where they're going with it, I could see Warcraft being one of those special effects, VFX, you know, th those types of contenders. Um, will the writing be good? I don't. There's a lot riding on that movie, isn't there? We'll see. We will sure see. No, I, w I would actually see a movie based off of Assassin's Creed 2. Mm. Just because seeing those uh, uh, Medici's killing each other and busy being Pope, <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, Rageinator brings up, if you keep Uwe Boll the fuck away from the movies. You know, I kind of feel like he's a joke that died out several years ago. I mean, isn't, isn't like, has he been allowed to make a movie? Uh, Loki, you followed him more than any of us. <laughs> Not that you should be proud of that, but is he, has, he, uh, has he made any movies lately? Oh, um, I think he has some new movie coming out at, uh, soon, but I don't. He hasn't really made a whole ton of stuff lately. I think he's been trying to do his own properties, and he even made like was it Tunnel Rats that he wanted to spin off into a game, and I think that happened, but no one cared. He should make Showgirls too, honestly. No, you do not <laughs> want him touching our beloved Showgirls. I should... think he's doing another. Remember, he the last thing he did was try to kickstart another postal movie. He went to Kickstarter. Yeah, he went to Kickstarter. People gave that man money? No, it. I don't think it It failed, so he didn't... What a know. shock. What a yeah. shock. <laughs> didn't he do... He, he, now, he, there was a Dungeon Siege movie with Burt Reynolds in it, am I correct? There was several Dungeon <laughs> Siege movies. Or, wait, no, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not thinking Dungeon Siege. Uh, there was um, several... Uh, what was the vampire one that he used to do a lot of? Uh, Blood Rain, several oh, Blood Rain yeah. movies. Yeah, oh well. They were all terrible. We're, I, I, I think we're all kind of over him, and certainly like he's the guy that needs to stop giving video game movies a bad name because he's ruining it for all of us. They had Your a Blood Rain movie that was a spaghetti anyway. western with zombies in it. <laughs> what the hell? I'm uh, sorry. Last good zombie movie was that one that I still have of yours. 28 Days Later, no, although those weren't Wild really Zero. zombies. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I need to give that back to you. Anyway, so uh, we, we'll see. So some of the chatters predicting Warcraft. My fandom predicts Mass Effect, if they could ever make a movie out of that. Any predictions on what, what video game would make great source material for an Academy Award winning movie? I would have a really hard time watching a Mass Effect movie because you know they'd put some dude. I can't. My head cannon doesn't accept a male shepherd. I, 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 I really think they could get more. I think they could convince people better that Femshep works than male Shep. And I... I stand male Shep, obviously, because of some of the choices I made in the game, but I would accept Fem Shep in the movie. Heck yeah. Especially um, if they got somebody like, I don't know why, but I just keep thinking, and I, I think this is a really easy choice, so I apologize to the Fem Shep fans out there, but for some reason, I really picture like Scarlett Johansson, just because she kicks so much ass as Black yeah. Widow. Yeah, I yeah. can see that. Yeah. Um, she'd have to, I think, work out a bit more. Sure. I mean, seriously. You know, I actually installed a mod for my um, Mass Effect 3 mm -hmm. that's called the Buff Femshep mod that actually makes her look less waifish and more like a career soldier. It's actually really cool. Um, but as far as, like, a game, I could see... Um, if you were going to do something animated, I would say um, Journey. 
Ooh. Because have you ever seen any of those different animations where there's no dialogue? It's all set to music. Ooh. Or for example, like the Interstellar, Interstellar, uh, fifty-five, fifty-five. You're kind of so you're kind of almost going like with a short film, almost. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's a. You know what's funny is I was going to make a joke here because Bobby Blackwolf in our chat room at live.vognetwork.com suggests Gone Home as a movie, and I was going to joke, oh, well, that would be a short film, wouldn't it? Because the the game wasn't really that long, but. You know, uh, actually, that's a type of medium that really could work. And we it's not like it's unheard of. Mortal Kombat now exists in short films on YouTube, the little episodic, yeah. you know, things they're doing. But I think that Journey would make like a, a really neat art film. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's, it's an art game. I mean, if you want to be. And Black Wolf does remind us, Journey's soundtrack already ran a Grammy. So... <laughs> It's it's already on its way to that. Anyway, all right, we could sit here and fan wank about movies and video games and all this for a very long time, but we want to get into uh, the gaming news, but we can't get there until we talk about what wank, our f- wank Rob wank as far as the eye can see. <laughs> we can't get there to gaming news until we talk about our frame of references, and that's why we always do at the top of the show. How was your gaming week, and what were the video games that you were playing this week, Dark Sakura? Um, this is actually the first time I've been influenced by a fanfic. But um, I started playing Dragon Age 2 again so I could play um, a mage. I love your shirt. Um, actually, I, my shirt, since thank you for, <laughs> my shirt actually says Realm Maintenance. It's actually another podcast that's out there. And the uh, host of Realm Maintenance, Ro, was kind enough to give me this shirt at BlizzCon. So shout out to Ro and his fantastic podcast, Realm Maintenance, which is um, great in the Warcraft podcast community. I really wish we had something like it in the general com- gaming community. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, um, I, I did start Dragon Age 2 again, except I'm not too happy with how my uh, hawk looks, so I'm going to redo her, because I have, like, a crap ton of mods, and unfortunately, like, some of the mods that I put in, like, made Aveline's face turn black, so I ended up installing this mod that makes Aveline look like the default hawk, except blonde, or something, so I was like, okay, whatever, I can deal with Aveline being pretty, um, but, uh, I started Dragon Age 2 again, um, playing some more Mass Effect 3, um, just because I want to, I put my, um, my Renegon game on hold, like, for the longest time, so now I'm just trying to finish it, and, uh, we just cured the genophage. Ooh, I had cries again, because, uh, crying. Um, uh, still playing Animal Crossing, because, what the fuck else? Um... Because those animals need Aaron's run stat. Hey, I have no more Ed, so it's glorious. That dresser ain't gonna run its run its way over to whatever's house by itself. I'm like, hey, can you give this to Eric? Eric walks right by. Sure. My townsfolk are stupid. Um. So yeah, I um, I played something else. I'm trying to remember what it was. Um. Oh yeah, I did actually play Govelius on iOS, and it sucks. So I deleted it. Um, I also did play the candy. What was the original? The candy swipe. We were candy about swipe. Weeks ago? Yeah. Um, it's not fun. I mean, uh, no offense to the guy, because I mean, it's pretty. But th- it's not that the game isn't fun. Is that the music sucks? Get better music for it, and you know, I'll play it more often. That poor guy probably did it all himself on a Casio keyboard. No, you know? it's it sounds like something. Just no, I could do better. Um, and if you hire me, I will do better. Um. But I still bought the game. I still supported it, and I'm still telling people not to buy um, Candy Suck. I mean, Candy Crush or whatever the fuck they stupid shits call it. Um, and I've had some wine, so I feel great. Um, I played something else. Yeah, if Dark Soccer oh, yeah. and I are a bit all over the place tonight, you'll know who to thank. Dude, it took me drinking half a bottle last night to be slightly tipsy. You can ask Becky because she was there. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I played Final Fantasy fourteen. There you go. And thank you to everybody who helped me finish uh, Brave Flop. I mean, Brave Flocks is whatever the crap is called. Um, but I still think it's funny to call it Brave Flop, even though that's like the best dungeon so far. Because you're like outside and there's crap going on. And you get to shoot fireflies. That's kind of cool. So yeah, I had a really good time playing Final Fantasy fourteen, And I will get to play much more of it and back to other games. So, All right. So stuff and things. And I got, I almost felt like I was going to throw up watching Dan play Forza. Cause <laughs> that good, huh? Is no, that the new one on Xbox One or one of the no, old ones? No, it's not Forza. It was some other racing sim he has on his triple screen. Uh, what was that one? It, it's like an actual rally racing sim. Dirt? Or? No, it's got, it's got like some sort of 
interesting European sounding name and yeah. whatever. One of them. Some game, some game. Probably so. uh, Toka. No, it was two words, but I forget. Uh. Anyway, Dan Dan's doing his big sim racing thing again, so they had it running all day. So I got really tired of hearing, you know. So I was like, I'm gonna hide in the back room. <laughs> all right, uh, let's move on. Loki, how was your gaming week? Um, it was okay. I didn't play a ton of stuff because you know time and everything, but I did manage to play a few things. Sadly, not a lot of it I can really talk about just because uh, one of, well, I can mention that I played Chroma because I got into the alpha for that. I just can't mention what I thought about it. I mean, other than it was good, I guess. Um, I played a little bit of South Park, The Stick of Truth. My God, is that game amazing. It is just fantastic. The humor in it is spot on and the it literally looks like you're watching the show. It's just awesome. Oh, wait, hold on, because a lot of people are kind of worried because there's, you know, tight embargoes on South Park, and I guess the reviews aren't going to pop up until right when the game comes out. But knowing, you know, that you have your connections and things, not piracy, we're talking about other connections that Loki has, you sometimes get things early. So you've actually had a chance to play it? Yeah, just a little bit, like 30 minutes. Oh, because one of the big questions out there is that the rumor is the game is really short. Like seven I, to eight yeah, hours. I don't know about that. Okay, well, it's, that's I'm just throwing it out there for better or worse. The rumor is that the game is only like seven to eight hours, which for an RPG is really short. But, I mean, if it can deliver the funny for seven to eight hours, I still, I like, I, I don't know, I kind of... Like, the South Park movie is one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my entire life. So this, if this game can deliver that for seven to eight hours, I do kind of think it's worth the $60, honestly. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. It's pretty funny. There's a part in the very beginning of the game where you are you go to Cartman's house, and then you're you're standing there, and you're walking through the living room, and his mom's there. Oh, you're a friend. And so one of the options is to talk to her, and Car you try to talk to her, and Cartman's like, she's not part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought that was hilarious. Or they have like, you know, you can take a shit in your toilet and pick up the shit so you can throw it at people. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's just I don't know. It's just really South Park humor. Classy. Yeah. Um, and then I, I think I'm pretty sure from what I read in the beta stuff that it's okay to talk about. Um, but the latest beta was it for Elder Scrolls Online. I played. A few minutes of that. I wasn't a big fan of the the game. Well, I mean, it, when it first was announced, I was like, oh my god, this game looks awesome. And every little bit of news that I heard after that, it's just been kind of going downhill. And I played it. Nah, that didn't change my mind. It, I mean, it's it looks like an Elder Scrolls game, but it's just kind of, I don't know, it's just missing something. Like charm, I guess. But, I mean, it's a beta still, so they're, you know, obviously the opening cutscene and stuff's gone, and they don't have that there. They have a, a little text thing explaining what the cutscene was going to look like. Um, and, I, and the combat's kind of okay. I was a little pissed off that it didn't support controllers, because that's what I normally play stuff on. And so I had to do kind of keyboard, mouse, and yeah, it worked all right. But it's just, I don't know. I would definitely not pay for it, but... I don't know. People will be excited about it, I guess. It's you know, coming out in a couple months. We've been talking about that game pretty extensively over on Horde House, where we talk about a lot of the uh, you know uh, multiplayer and online games. And I have to admit, I I probably I wasn't even drinking on the show this week, and I kind of became a little unhinged at the whole Elder Scrolls thing because uh, I'm I'm just really shocked that they're going to charge a monthly fee for it, and every sign points to it's not going to work for them, and they're going to reverse on that mighty quick. I mean, we might be wrong. But, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. The The initial buzz doesn't look too great. Yeah, I don't know. I, it just seems very basic to me. But, I, like I said, I didn't give it that much time. But I don't... I, I was, like, short in time. I was like, okay, well, I can play more Elder Scrolls. Or I could play South Park. I'll <laughs> play South Park. There you go. All uh, right. That's pretty much it. That's it. All right, well, my gaming week. I got to admit, I didn't play a lot of new stuff because I'm still, you know, trucking along in Final Fantasy XIV. But again, I've been focusing on a game 
that I kind of went back to after a, a, a little while away. I've been talking about the past couple weeks on the show Diablo 3 on the PlayStation 3, which I was, you know, playing. And I was talking about how it kind of controls weird, but gosh, it makes me really curious to go back and check out the PC version. Well, like clockwork, the PC version got a huge patch this last week, the 2.0 patch, because they've got that expansion coming that they want to, you know, get sold copies of and convince people they need to go to level 70 and play as a crusader and so forth. So there's a huge patch that went out for Diablo this weekend. It added clans into the game, uh, but most importantly, it changed the loot system completely. Um, and now the loot you get, the vast majority of it, like 90% of it, is something your class can actually use, with the minority being stuff that you might want to put in your stash to give to other characters. And the other huge change they made was the difficulty settings. They completely eliminated the fact that there are four difficulty levels. They Like, there was, what, Normal and Hell and Inferno? Like, I, don't, I don't remember what they were all called. But there was the four different difficulty levels. They eliminated that completely. And now, all of the characters scale to your level, and you choose... Do you want it to be normal where it's kind of easy? Do you want it to be hard where it's a little more difficult, but you get increased experience and gold drops? Do you want it to be terror where it's even hard? And so on. So they, they changed it so that you have a little more tweak over how difficult the game is as opposed to you've got the this track, this track, this track, and this track. And I got to tell you, when I first read that, I was a little bit like, oh, level scaling? I don't know. That doesn't work so well in Final Fantasy. But it really does work in Diablo 3 because normal... Yeah, you can kind of steamroll it. And even hard, if you have the right gear, is is not really... I've been playing mostly in hard, and it's really not that hard. But um, as you get into the other difficulties, I imagine things get a lot more difficult, especially as you bring more players in the mix. So it really does feel like you have way more control over how difficult the game is, as opposed to you've got these four vanilla tracks. So I think in some regards, that has really changed the game. And most people I know that have gone back and played the game say, wow, Diablo 3 is like really fun and it's not like they didn't go back and like add really a lot of story or they didn't really change the game in that regard it's just they made a few key design changes that have really flipped the game upside down for some people in a good way um the auction house is still there but that will be eliminated in about two weeks i think and it's really a footnote now like you kind of have to really search for it to find it because obviously they're gonna they, they want to make it so you can just strip it out really easy and you're not even gonna be able to notice i couldn't even find the real money auction house i think i think that's already gone or that is so well hidden i couldn't even find that so um, yeah, if, if you were kind of not wanting to play Diablo 3 because of some of the auction house fuckery and all that, it's, uh, it's different now. Uh, Bobby Blackwolf in chat says, does it have BBF mode or Bobby Blackwolf forever mode? You know, so we sometimes call it, um, yes and no. I mean, no, there's no like super easy mode, but if you play on normal and you get I mean, and you're just staying on top of your gear drops and replacing you you will not have a problem. I really can't see that you're going to die an awful lot. And if you die, oh well, you run back to your corpse and you come back without penalty. Uh, it's hardcore mode where you have to worry about that because in hardcore mode is the whole die once, die forever. I always kind of preferred the way Path of Exile handled that, where if you die in hardcore mode, your character is bumped down to the normal bracket and you can't play hardcore again on that character. I kind of like that a little better. It, it doesn't make the loss feel as severe, but the stakes are high when you decide to be a hardcore player. And it's so funny, when you because I actually did start a hardcore Barbarian this week, and I did not think I would like playing a Barbarian, but they're actually a lot of fun. But anyway... Um, when you start a hardcore character, you basically have to sign a waiver, so to speak, with your mouse that's like, this character will be gone forever if you die. Customer support will not bring these back for any reason. You have to, like, accept this before you play. So it's it's pretty awesome. Hmm. So anyway, yeah, I, I'm sure a lot of people got their free copy of Diablo 3 with the whole um, uh, blood pact that Blizzard did with World of Warcraft some time ago. And even if you didn't, it's it's pretty cheap now i think because they have that expand i mean they're gonna make try to make their money on the expansion and they really i mean when you go to select a character crusader is just one of the options right there you can pick just like a witch doctor or barbarian or something that's in the game normally but of course if you try to click okay it'll say oh crusader is only available in reaper of souls give us your credit card now da, 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 you know that whole type of thing but uh, yeah diablo 3 it's changed for the better, and if you had the game already, you didn't have to pay monthly fee for it or anything, so reinstall reinstall it and check it out and see what you've missed out on. 
or see see not so much what Jimmy's down, but see what's new because it is it is worth checking out again. That oddly enough reminded me of what the other thing was, by the way. Hmm. League of Legends. Oh, that's right. You started randomly ins- getting into that. I huh? installed it just to see what it's like, but I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> well, that's nothing. You didn't play it then. Just saying. It doesn't count. It's on my computer. Next. Well, pff, big deal. I got a lot of stuff on my computer I've never touched either. You want to look at my Steam library? <laughs> All right. After I get through going through mine. <laughs> Well, as we get into the news a little later on tonight, we can go through each other's. Ooh. Ooh. All right. (laughs) Some housekeeping first before we get there. Um, As a reminder, there will be no show on March 16th. Or I should say no live show. I need to talk to Dark Soccer and Loki because I want to put something together that may be pre, you know, uh, done in advance or whatever. So uh, we'll try to do that. So that way you podcast folks don't have to go a week with no show. But we will not be here live on March 16th. That is because... The studio is moving because I am moving um, much more space. They're growing legs and they're walking. Well, there's going to be space. And with space means we can consider the webcam. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to promise nothing. So I'll be wearing a sheet. <laughs> we can put you in a I'm box. I'm going to become the Burka Avenger. <laughs> we can put you I'll in a box. I'll be cosplaying her every week. Um, so no show, no live show on March 16th. And, uh, of course you can follow us on, uh, Twitter, twitter.com slash OLR. And we're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash orange lounge radio. And one other important piece of housekeeping for the past couple weeks, we've been talking about a fun little free game, uh, parody game that's available over at vognetwork.com. It is flappy vog and flappy vog, uh, flappy vog did get its second character pack tonight. It is character pack two, the final and uh, the sole star of Character Pack 2 is Loki. So uh, if you've... And I, I got to say, though, Loki's lines are pretty hilarious. I won't spoil it here, but uh, well done, sir. I laughed. I laughed a lot. I, I played it for a little bit, and I'm already getting tired of hearing <laughs> my voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh, you can check that out over at flappy.vognetwork.com. But uh, as we talked about earlier on the Bobby Blackwolf show, part of joke, part of parody, part of satire is that you got to know when to walk away. And the joke's already starting to get a little, a little stale. Loki doing it has breathed some life into it, but after after this, it is it is for sure done. There's we're not going to really talk Didn't about you get it. Rob, anymore. you got that song stuck in my head now. What song? The Gambler. I'm a joker. You got, you got I'm a know smoker. when to hold it. <laughs> All right. When to walk away. Are you going to serenade us with some karaoke revolution tonight? No. Some Sing Star? No. I have Y'all are you singing the Joker when I was talking about the gambler? I have Sing Star ABBA and Sing Star Queen. I need to borrow, by the way, Sing Star ABBA. <laughs> In hell. All right. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Let's uh, get, see if I bring you anyone. Let's get to. Although I think it was already here. Let's get to some gaming news. Loki will start us off while Dark Soccer and I fight over my copy of Sing Star ABBA. Loki. Well, with uh, the phasing out of a lot of the Wii stuff, um, they are now pulling the plug on online play for the Wii and the DS. Because, hey, they have a Wii U and a 3DS that they want you to buy. So if you want to play online with people, you can buy a new system. And uh, that is happening May 20th. And, of course, um, that shuts down such uh, things as... You know, just online play. Um, also, some of the stuff that will not be affected. Of course, anything that involves you paying them money. So the DSi shop or the Wii, um, was it the Wii shop? Those are um, staying open. Um, and of course, you know, the browsers and Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, etc. That's all going to still work. But, um, you know, you remember they took away the uh, weather and news channel. Well, now they're taking away online as well. Man. Uh, That does kind of suck. I love to spin the globe in the weather channel and check out what the weather's going to be like in Antarctica. I mean, I guess I could do that online, but. It's cold. Um, Yeah, it is kind of disappointing that they they have removed online for their games, um, especially when you consider that a lot of other systems out there, you know, their games are still alive and kicking. Um, Some of the thought might have been that this was due to the fact that they are, they were leasing, um, I guess, their servers through Gamefly, or not Gamefly, GameSpy. Um, And because of that, and I think that they went under new ownership, that the fees are a lot higher so now they're just kind of cutting their losses and hopefully trying to drive people, you know, to play stuff on the Wii U. Also, considering I think one of the more popular games on there was Mario Kart Wii, and it literally shuts down 10 days before Mario Kart um, 8 comes out. So that could be something. Hmm. 
a little bit a uh, little bit uh, aptly timed there. By the way, uh, in our chat room over at live.vognetwork.com, VXJSNXV is in chat and talks about how he likes to spin the globe in the Weather Channel and comes across Cockburn Town. There's a place called Cockburn Town? I had no idea. There's a Cockburn Town. Probably. I knew, that, I knew there was a fuck Austria. I knew about that. Or is it fucking or fuck? One of the two. I think, fu- I think it's fucking or something, Austria. But I did not know there was a Cockburn Town, but it, apparently, yes, it, it is the capital of the Turks and Caicos Islands. Who knew? Fun. Go visit Cockburn Town, There's also Town, stuff everybody. called cockaliki soup, which I just think is funny. <laughs> it's basically chicken and leek soup, but it's called cockaliki. <laughs> no comment. Hello, all of our friends in Scotland. And it's, it's not like you can't do this on, like, theweatherchannel.com or, or maps.google or whatever, but I don't know. There was something very therapeutic. Just just roll with me here. Surely I can't be the only one. I know J- Jason just admitted to doing this, too. There was something very therapeutic to that little music in the Wee Weather Channel, the doo doo Little, little like ambient Philip Glass shit that they would play in the background. I love Philip Glass. And you would just like spin the globe, spin the globe, spin the globe, spin the globe. And then like, ooh, what's the weather going to be like here? Stop. No way. It's fucking Austria. All right. All right. Anyway. But, 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 hmm. but, but there's also hell <laughs> and there's um, the crap else I was thinking of. Um, there's a cool California. Yeah. It's cool. There's weed California. That's right. They, you, they make a killing off shirts. Yes, they do. Mm, merchandise. I went to weed and all I got was a shirt. All right, anyway. Sorry, Loki, didn't mean to uh, derail what you were saying. Was there anything no, else? No, that, that's pretty much it. I mean, it just kind of sucks that they're, you know, shutting down the online. But they've already kind of written that console off. And to be honest, there's not really any games coming out for it anymore. There's some of these really small third-party guys that are still releasing things. But no major companies supporting that system anymore. Ironically... Same with the Wii U, but you know, hey, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's I don't. If they're thinking that turning off online is going to get people to, you know, force them into buying a Wii U, then I don't think that's going to happen. I think if anything, it's just to uh, kind of save some money. I'm not. I, I know there's a lot of people that want to shout conspiracy theory and all this stuff. I'm not necessarily convinced that's the case. I kind of think that was already the case when Nintendo started releasing these consoles because the last two SKUs of the Wii didn't even have online in it, right? They were like the kid-friendly mini Wiis or whatever that didn't... That, they, that was just the Wii Mini, and it didn't even sell that well. They, hmm. they released that very limited, and that was it. Um, I still think the Wii has online. It's just that it doesn't have backwards compatibility with the GameCube anymore. I, I think the reality is people aren't playing these games online anymore because they've all moved on to either Wii U or, let's be real, PlayStation and Xbox games. You know, I don't... I just, I, and I think anybody that's still playing these games probably is playing them in the same room or whatever. Like, and you know what's going to sadly happen with a lot of this stuff? Hmm. I think this might be the case is you know... Um, there are pretty capable Wii emulators out there that have online, I think, support or for multiplayer or something. Um, that might be the option is that they do it that way, some sort of tunneling. Um, I had mentioned before, that, like uh, for the Xbox and Xbox 360, I think PSP and GameCube, they have options. They're called tunneling programs. And basically it tricks the system into thinking that it's doing like a system link or LAN game. But instead, it's going over the internet. And so you kind of peer with other people that way, but it connects via LAN. See, because they have that with the GameCube, although it wasn't a feature that a lot of people use, like, for example, with Double Dash, but, you know, the Wii never had that. There was no LAN games on the Wii. Right. Um well, and that's that's the only bummer of this to me. I mean, I can accept the fact that really nobody's playing these games online anymore, so it's time for them to come down. And if I really wanted to play Mario Kart Wii online, then I probably should have been do- doing that the past three years. I'm sure Nintendo is looking at reports, and there's there's so few people that are playing these games online, it's not cost-effective to keep the servers going. I get that. But the part of me that loves classic games, as we talk about a lot here on Orange Launch Radio, classic gaming, the part of me that loves classic games is a little bit disappointed that nobody will ever be able to play a game of Mario Kart, I mean, after May, will be able to play a game of Mario Kart Wii over the internet, at least through any type of official means. I mean, you're going to have to hack a system like you're talking about or, or do emulators or some type of you know underground things in order to do that. That's that's the only part of it that's a little bit disappointing to me. I mean, I'll get over that, but 
that's the only bummer is that, you know, in 10, 15 years, when we want to look back on gaming's history, the way we look back fondly on a lot of our NES games and, and you know, Genesis games and Atari games of the past, we're not going to be able to do that completely with these internet-enabled games. But, I mean, this is... This is a complaint that isn't limited in Nintendo. It's something. I mean, obviously, EA pulls servers down all the time, and so on and so on. So, true. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess Nintendo's just following the trend in that regard. But uh, yeah, I mean, there are some games though on the DS that you know haven't really seen any type of reimagining. I know Bobby was talking a lot about Clubhouse games tonight. Um, Alan had brought up, po was it Pokemon Puzzle League or was it, no, that was a Nintendo 64 game, that Puzzle, Planet Puzzle League, or so it was the same type of thing, but it was on the DS. You know, those type of games don't really exist on the 3DS, at least yet. Ooh, Loki. Here's a uh. tinfoil hat thought. Tell me what you think. Aren't DS games supposed to be coming to the Wii U Virtual Console? That is true. Do you see where I'm going with this? Do you think uh -huh. they will have online enabled? Um, uh, if, I uh, probably, um, if, you know, it, I don't know, probably, um, but once again with the DS though, although they don't have a tunneling program available, anything that can play, you can play locally should be able to connect over, uh, the internet if someone finishes the tunneling program for that. But yeah, I see what you're saying is that, you know, maybe they're going to add, uh, you know, multi online multiplayer to DS games. I would like to hope that that's going to be something that they do, although they tend to go the lazy route with a lot of these things and not add features like that. They just kind of put the bare minimum, okay, game's on, you know, virtual console, that's it. Still, it's it's one of those questions you got to wonder about. And, and Bobby Blackwolf in chat says, I don't think they'll have online enabled because they're shutting off the servers. But what if, what if they decide to release Metroid Prime Hunters? I really think they should bring back online for something like that. Like, I, I, you can't sell an emulated copy of the game without really giving you the full experience, right? Because, you know, it will have been at that point, what, a good five, six, seven years since that game originally first came out by the time they released this on Virtual Console. Uh, just, just throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. Uh, Tiger Claw wants to say, don't worry, Mario Kart 7 has race courses from Mario Kart Wii. Then soon, Mario Kart 8 will have race courses from the Wii and 3DS version. Nintendo likes to recycle the old tracks in each iteration. That is a true point, Tiger Claw, but it is selections. And of course, your favorite track never seems to make the cut, now does it? Maybe it does, but for a lot of people, they always go, well, they should have had this track in the game. Of course, it'll be very interesting if they decide to do DLC. I mean, think about it. Couldn't Mario Kart 8 feasibly have every Mario Kart course ever made? They could just do it through DLC? They won't yeah. do that because they're remaking all the tracks. Like, mm. even they have one from the Game Boy Advance or whatever, and it looks completely different now because they've mm. completely changed it up. So um, I don't think they're going to go back and remake all the tracks. They probably they may have, like, a DLC pack, but that's it. Okay. I, and, and maybe that's even just more characters. They might not even go the route of making more courses. All right, well, I'm going to move on to another story here that has to do with Nintendo and, and some of the things that uh, they should or they shouldn't be doing. Um, this is a comment that really spread around the Internet this week from Seth Fisher, who's a big hedge fund manager in Asia. So, you know, he's, he's of the investor sort, and investors haven't been making a lot of great comments about Nintendo lately, but this one is one of the ones that takes the cake, okay? Because they say Nintendo has a huge library of casual games, and so they should get to smartphone and tablet-based gaming, right? So we've heard this one before, right? But here's the quote. Quote, Nintendo needs to embrace this thematic change in consumer demand, behavior, and expectations to stay relevant. It is readily apparent that the standard elasticity of demand principle no longer applies in the, cons in the consumer entertainment market when access requires the purchase of a physical project. As the holder of what is arguably the largest library of casual games, Nintendo is well-placed to make an immediate entry into mobile. Okay, well, that's fine. But then this led into talk about... Well, you know, because you see in, in Candy Crush Saga, they get billions of dollars. What was it? $1.9 billion in revenue or whatever it was they made. What if we just had it where you could pay 99 cents to make Mario jump a little higher? And, like, my head exploded hearing that, especially with all this talk of Donkey Kong Country this week and how insanely difficult it is on the Wii U. I mean, that's part of the experience. I mean, Nintendo makes A-plus platformers and for a reason. And, and suddenly changing that formula where, oh, Mario can jump just a little bit higher for 99 cents is really going to... That's shitty. Is some, that's somebody who does not get it. 
Yeah, right. Who's not? Who does not get the point of having a game? People like this tend to loop video. Ga- See, there's there's the key, there's a key in here. Is it just wants to exploit a market and not make a good product. Well, the problem is these folks that are tunnel visioned here, which I understand. The goal is to make money. That's what investment is. You want your company to make money. I get that. But when we get really tunnel visioned, we we start to think that oh, Mario Candy Crush, the same thing. No, not even close. I mean, for better or worse, at least Nintendo's got way better clout amongst gamers. And there's a certain expectation from a Nintendo product than there is, you know, King. You have something that's only looking on the money-making aspect of it. You're going to eventually get too many jaded consumers who aren't going to put their investment in the product. They want something that's going to be fun, that is a game to enjoy. Then they're going to spend the money on it. You know... How many of these different clones out there that are just, you know, revenue monsters really get as successful as some of these little single ones do? And then people forget about it, move on to the next one. I think another thing these investors tend to forget is that Candy Crush Saga is a flash in the fucking pan. It's a flash in the pan, just like Farmville. And you notice how quickly Zynga went up and now they fell. I mean, they're not out of business per se, but Zynga has come down from their peak. We know that. The same, the bubble is going to burst on Candy Crush Saga as well. In fact, I would argue it's already beginning to burst because of all that negative publicity they got. We'll get into that a little later in the show. But my point is that bubble's going to burst. Now, maybe for an investor, that's not such a bad thing because it's like trying, you're trying to ride the waves of the ocean. You try to catch a company, right? It's going to go up and then you sell, 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 sell right before it's going to go down. You get onto the next big flash in the pan. That's how, you know, a lot of the stock market works. But that's that's like not what we expect. Nintendo is not a flash in the pan. I really don't. Even even if you're the biggest Nintendo critic in the world and you hate the Wii U, you got to admit Nintendo is not a flash in the pan. There's a certain expectation. Uh, there's a certain expectation you have on a Nintendo, and I think that's why people are disappointed in the Wii U. Loki, any thoughts before we move on? Um, this is why you know companies tend not to listen to you know each investor because you you. You've, put money down in the company and all of a sudden you think that you run it i mean it's just i don't know i think it's it's a dumb idea they already own the handheld console market i don't think that they need to really change what they're doing all right fair enough let's move on to uh something else besides nintendo dark soccer what do you have for us well um the uh we brought this up before about steam uh starting their uh, family op the steam family sharing and uh well, it's now out of beta. It's official. You can do the Steam family sharing. So basically, it lets for uh, anyone who you knows family or trusted friend or something like that that has uh, access to the different games, um, be it PC, be it Mac or Linux, um, via Steam, they can share their libraries with each other. Um, and so they can basically share their progress over the Steam cloud, which, I mean, like, for me and Dan, we have a few overlapping games. This would actually be great because then we can, you know, share our games with each other um, instead of each of us both having to buy five different versions of Strider like we did and I haven't played it yet. Um, but it's pretty neat. I mean, they've got all the details on it on their website and I'm uh, thinking that he and I should give it a try this week. Something really fascinating about this feature that I find, and maybe this is just my own experiences, but it's, it's horrifically underused. Like, I, I, I've been in the beta for a while, and I was even telling friends of mine, like, yeah, you want to check out that game? Just uh, I, I'll uh, get the Steam thing set up on your computer at some point. But they never, we never do it. Like, they never really want to play it that bad enough. And even Alan and I are still buying, like, two copies of the same game. Maybe not as bad as we used to. But, like, you know, he has access to my Steam library. I don't think he really uses it. Like, I, and not, you know, I'm just saying, I, I think it's an underused feature right now. It's, it's really weird because I think there was that perception out there that, oh, people are going to share their library with 10 different people. And, you know, that's no. why Steam has to lock them out. But, like, that, at least in my experience, that isn't happening. I have like offered up my library to, and no, I'm not going to give it to any random listener, but trusted friends of mine that kind of don't seem to care. Because uh, we all have 200 some games that we haven't played yet. Yeah, and maybe that's, maybe that's really it, Loki. That's, I, I wouldn't doubt that that's an issue. Well, I'm, I'm just going to enable mine for Dan anyway, you know, cause he, I've had some games that I've told him to check out and he just said, Oh, well, I don't want to buy it. So now he can check them out. 
Yeah, and, and and Alan and I really need to set a rule, quote unquote, that we don't buy two of the same game anymore with this. Unless you've got multiplayer and you both want to play together. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Something like that the case or whatever, but you know. Yeah. But I mean it's it's still regardless of how utilized it's gonna be, I still think it's a good it's a good thing to have. It's it gives more value to individual purchases and it will make um Honestly, I think it might alleviate the need to have so many consistent sales, at least for big titles. It make it uh, you get you get more value out of the game, so the the bigger titles will sell while they're still closer to full price. All right, I'm gonna uh, I'm I'm gonna ask the chatters about this in a minute, but I'll I'll move on because I know we have more Steam news, and I want to come back and ask the chatters a question. So uh, let's go to uh, Loki. So I'm surprised that this wasn't a thing in the first place, but apparently um, there was a big elaborate process in order to you know, put your titles on sale if you were um, someone selling a game on Steam. Well, now they have some sort of um, modifications to that with the new Steamwork tools that allows you to configure um, discounts for custom sale periods or opt in to take part in an upcoming week-long sale. And um, you can also configure when the discounts will start or if they start, you know, a specific time or how long they run and that kind of thing. Uh, it seems like something that should have been there in the first place. I mean, but now I, I like the idea of it because now it gets people, you know, on Steam checking it, you know, all the time instead of just waiting for, you know, a um, holiday sale or something. Yeah, I was I, I kind of thought this was already a thing like I. I kind of didn't realize that publishers didn't really have control over that. Although it does seem like every sale that we see on Steam is very timed. Like there's always the week sale, the weekend sale, the holiday sales, you know, and so on and so on. There's there's not really like random sales, and that's what you're going to start seeing now, right? I guess, yeah. Right. So I don't know. That was um, just kind of interesting. Um, um, hold on. Thing. Before oh, go ahead. before you get to the next uh, Steam story, I've got one thing here I want to ask our folks, and I'm actually going to make this a live poll because you know I love my live polls. So we're going to ask the audience over at live.vognetwork.com a question right now, and that question is quite simple: Have you used Steam family sharing? And I, I try to really limit the number of answers here because I want a clear picture. Yes, I use it regularly. I used it once, or nope. Answer now, uh, live listeners. You got to be logged in over at live.vognetwork.com, and it'll show up at the bottom of the screen. I'm only going to leave this open for a couple minutes, so hurry up and vote over at live.vognetwork.com. Loki, back to you. All right, and then the um, the other thing is finally the was well, Steam Music is going into beta, and so they I guess um, put out the first round of invites, and I guess for a limited time you'll be able to. Uh, stream some mp3s i guess um currently only mp3s and then later they're going to add more formats um and i guess users can purchase uh game soundtracks or other things like that so that's kind of neat so i guess they're going to start selling music as well and then allow you to you know i i don't know for me i don't think this would be a big like something i would want to use just because you know, I'm playing on a PC. I can just play music in the background. Uh, but I guess with this being tied in, you know, it would like maybe shut off the music in the game or something to that effect. I don't know. I, I just don't know what the advantage would be going this route versus, you know, just playing music on my computer. Hmm. Uh, is it is it something maybe for the Steam box, like kind of like a long term vision type of thing? Well, it is something that's limited to Steam OS and big picture mode, but uh, I don't know. Uh, apparently, they're going to have an interface also that's going to be um, for just the regular desktop version, but right now it's just for those two versions. So I don't know. Once again, you know, not a feature I even really use on consoles either. So. I don't know. I don't know what the big deal is. I guess it's just, you know, it allows them to sell more things. Uh, Jason in our chat has a perspective. Our buddy VXJ6V says, Steam Music exists for one reason. Valve needed a player in Steam OS. Steam Music as it stands is kind of bunk, in my opinion. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, uh, when these Steam boxes come out, 
my assumption is they need to be able to play media as a part of it, right? Because a lot of people razz the fact that the PS4 won't play an audio CD, I think. So, hmm. anyhow. All right, uh, we'll do one more story, and then we'll go to the results of the poll here. So, um, we've been talking about Steam. Let's talk about uh, sharing of a different nature, because some big news came out this week about Twitch TV and how they're going to integrate with the Xbox One. Now, a lot of folks have been anticipating when this is going to happen, when this is going to happen, and some folks thinking that Microsoft may wait until E3, but it looks like we are going to get it a little bit sooner. Uh, we're going to get Twitch streaming on the Xbox One on March 11th, and this is kind of timed a little bit key because that is when Titanfall is supposed to come out. So make no mistake, I'm sure the rush was, hey, if we can get this enabled in time for Titanfall, that'll be a lot of free publicity for that game uh, through the Xbox One Twitch integration. So they are working on that. Now, the nice thing about Twitch on the Xbox One versus the PlayStation 4 on the PlayStation 4, those cameras are still impossible to find, let me tell you. I don't know what the hell's going on there. I, I, I thought after the Japanese launch it might get easier, but no, it seems like they stopped making them or something. But with the Xbox One, that ain't going to be an issue because everybody's got a camera in their house. Also, it seems like they've kind of taken the Twitch integration to the next level uh, than what you see on PlayStation 4 because you're going to have that chat room on the side that looks a little more like it does on Twitch TV where you have the emote icons, the different colors by people's names. I, I don't know if this is to may maybe enable some of the subscription things where subscribed users get their own emote, uh, own emote icons or what, but there's that. Uh, the CEO of Twitch, Emmett Shear, told the Associated Press it is a complete integration. It's exciting because we've never had the ability to broadcast from a console like this with such a deep level of integration. The concept of being able to join a broadcaster's party is really cool, and it's another step in the direction of interacting more closely with broadcasters. So uh, no word yet if PlayStation 4's version will be patched or updated to try and compete with this a little bit. We will see. Um, there will also be, and this is, uh, this is kind of a big deal, they're also going to be able to archive the streams on the Xbox One, which is something you can do with Twitch on the PC. For whatever reason, PlayStation 4 streaming will not archive broadcasts right now. And uh, when pressed for comments, Sony wouldn't make a comment on if this is going to change. I sort of think they're going to have to be pressured into it. But my thought was, I thought that was all on Twitch's side. But maybe there's something where Sony's providing some of the oomph? I, I really don't know. Um, to start streaming to Twitch, apparently all you have to do is say Xbox Broadcast, which I'm sure will open up the uh, Xbox Ones to all sorts of tra uh, trolling. But uh, we'll see. So there you go. Um, I know you don't own an Xbox One, Loki, but let's say hypothetically you did. Would you uh, be excited about this Twitch sharing? Would you be using this, or? I don't know if I'd be using it. Um, I, even if I had a PlayStation 4, I don't know if I'd be using it. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't know. I had a good time. I, I've done a limited streaming on the PlayStation 4. It works really well. Like, streaming Final Fantasy XIV for my PlayStation 4 is better than the PC. But that I just mean, might be the fact I... that my PC is five years old as well. I, I guess if someone really wants to watch me play games, I mean, sure, why not? <laughs> All right, well, before we get to the next story, let's get to the results of the live poll. We asked our live listeners, have you used Steam Family Sharing? That was the question, and the three options were, yes, I use it regularly, I used it once, or nope. Get this, guys, 82%. No, never used it. 14%, I used it once. And only single digits. Very probably like one or two people saying yes, I use it regularly. Fascinating. So there you go. Interesting. So much hype for such a feature that people really don't seem to be using at all. It's very very interesting. Just just pointing that out. Anyhow, uh, Dark Soccer. What do you have for us before we get to release dates? Well, this was actually a big rumor going that uh, Botbuster had been licensed out. Um, the Dish Network licensed uh, Blockbuster brand uh, to Crash Entertainment. This has actually been determined to be uh, incorrect. That uh, this the story actually came out um, was a few days ago, and then it was updated um, to say that Dish said no, we haven't done this. Um, uh, Dish Network and Blockbuster have not entered any sort of licensing agreement. This is for Blockbuster in the UK, by the way. And that um, Crash Entertainment uh, said that it. Cl um, had a claim that it licensed Blockbuster, and then um, it looked like it was actually not true either. Um, however, they said they tend they wanted to open ten new Blockbuster stores by uh, in 2014. 
it was on their website and it has been removed from their website. So nope, no blockbuster. Sorry. So blockbuster was going to be a thing and now it's not a thing anymore. Yeah. So it would interest some people, you know, in case you wanted to get a, you know, aren't there still s- stores here and there? Or I no. guess, no, God. Yeah. I guess I was thinking the one that I used to see over on uh, I know this is going to be lost on non-local people, but there was one over on Greenback and Hazel for the longest time. No, and it's not, not there anymore. anymore huh? Yeah. It's closed. Wow. That one that was near my house is gone too. Hmm. And I mean, we, we had a friend who was a manager at one. Oh, wow. And yeah, no, gone. Interesting. I didn't realize they were all gone. I mean, it makes sense, sadly. So. Yeah, that ship sank. My first minimum wage job was at a video store. Not Blockbuster, but a local chain, which is <laughs> Blockbuster and Hollywood put that chain under that I used to work for. And then, you know, now it's kind of interesting that Hollywood went under and now Blockbuster went under. So yeah. it's just, that's how technology can really change the commerce in yep. our world. So interesting. So. Alrighty, um, we have some more stories for you guys, but first we're going to travel around the world and check out some release dates and see what's coming out in a game store near you. And uh, Logie? Not a whole ton this week. It's pretty much just South Park The Stick of Truth on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC. Uh, Zoo Tycoon, I think, is getting a disc release this week on Xbox One. And they have an XCOM Enemy Unknown Complete Edition coming out on PC. Kind of a re-release for that. That is it. All right. Let's travel over to Japan and check out the releases there. PlayStation 4 is still laying on their uh, launch lineup. There's no new games really until mid-March. So we've got a few weeks before we start seeing more on the PlayStation 4. But as a reminder, it is out in Japan. So they are eating up their launch content right now. Uh, On the PlayStation 3, however, a little different because we do have some releases. A lot of price reductions, actually. Injustice uh, price reduction, Lord of the Rings, War in the North, FEAR 3, Biohazard 6, which, of course, is Resident Evil 6. Lots and lots of price reductions, but we do have uh, some new games. Uh, Yaiba, Ninja Gaiden Z, uh, regular special ninja and special zombie is all coming out. I do not believe this is the same as, like, this isn't canon Ninja Gaiden series, is it? It's more, It looks like like the art... It's a spinoff. It's like, um, it's done by the guy that did Resident Evil. Because it looks it looks very cel-shaded manga style. So it's not like a part of the main Ninja Gaiden series. It was like a spinoff, cartoony, ultra-violent. It looks like blood everywhere from these pictures. And there's one picture where, I'm assuming this is Ryu or some type of relative, is, is basically holding a de- decapitated cyborg head, yet there's red blood any- everywhere anyway. Anyway. No, Rob, it's oil. It's machine oil. Oh, oh, of go. course. Of course, of course. Sure. Anyway, so for those of you guys that like to slash zombies Ninja Gaiden style, there you go. That is in Japan this week on March the 6th. Over on the Xbox 360, same thing. Uh, Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Seas seems to be the big release this week, but uh, Biohazard 6 also getting a price reduction there if you missed that for whatever reason. On the PlayStation Vita, Luminous Electronic Symphony gets a price reduction. That, of course, was one of the launch titles. There's some new SKU coming out, the new Slim Model Welcome Box. I'm not sure what all that entails. I'm assuming it must have some different pack-in games, but that is something that is coming out in Japan. Or that's like a PlayStation Plus. It looks like it comes with God Eater 2, uh, Terraria looks like it's in there. Uh, I'm trying to look from this really tiny box art. Some type of baseball, one of the baseball simulators. It's just basically a... You know, I, I, do they have PlayStation Plus in Japan like we have it here, where they give all the yeah. free games? I think they have it in Japan. I bet, I bet that's part of it. But anyhow, if you're if you've been sitting on a Vita and you're waiting for some extra games, there you go. Waiting for it to hatch. I guess sitting on a Vita. You need there to be tons of games out. There you go. Uh, Soul Sacrifice Delta also out this week in Japan. And let me check out the other handheld real quick. That would be the 3DS. The 3DS gets um, Doraemon. Shindobita no damai kyo peko no, or excuse me, peko to five nin no tanki natai comes out this week. Because, you know, you love your Doraemon, right? Doraemon. He's Doraemon so is that, if you didn't know, is that. It's a little cat with no ears. Yeah, that blue, that blue cat you sometimes see. So Doraemon is so cute. So he gets a new game there on the 3DS this week. Uh, also, um, Anpanman to as. Ah, ah, what? I want this. What it, I do not know what it's this Anpan is. It's Man. No, you don't get it. It's Anpan Man. Okay. Oh, excuse me. I yeah, I don't get it. Please. I have a special love of Anpan Man. Edu- ed- Anpan educate me, lady. He's a superhero made out of Anpan, which is a delicious yeasty bread filled with red bean paste. I have I have a stuffed Anpan Man in my uh, in my 
uh, art studio room. Okay, okay, so so what the hell is this game then? It's not, I don't see screenshots. So, he's but a he's, superhero. He's holding a pencil. Does he draw? Or I don't this, know what this, this one is. is. I don't game. care because it's on Pod Man and I want it, but I don't have a Japanese 3DS. <laughs> And the 3DS is region long to w- locked womp womp. <laughs> region long. Yeah. No, I love I love Anpan Man. He's so cute. All right. Well, there you go. Those are your Japanese releases. So I guess Dark Saga is going to uh, try to co- try to convince Akuma JP to come over. <laughs> bring, bring, let me see your, let like me see your 3DS. I like 3DS and some Anpan Man. <laughs> uh, to be perfectly honest, we actually have a good place in Sacramento that makes a fantastic Anpan. And then they also make um, little uh, chocolate Chocopon in the shape of Anpan Man's face, which I think is even more hilarious because they should actually make the Anpan in the shape of Anpan Man's face. But never mind. Meanwhile, in the UK, Dark Sagra. Oh, yeah, some stuff. On the 5th, uh, we have Dead Nation Apocalypse Edition for PS4. And then on the 7th is um, Atelier, um, Esha, and Luggy. Uh, South Park, The Stick of Truth on Damn Near Everything Else, and the Dead Rising Collection on Xbox 360. And that's it. All right, just a few more stories for you guys before we get to the classic game of the week. Loki. Uh, so, r- real quick, King, you know, the company behind Candy Crush Saga, they've withdrawn their trademark application for candy they, in the U.S. They do have Saga, though. That is all. They suck. So, in other words, that bad publicity with the whole uh, candy swipe thing really did them in? Because I kind of think that's what it was, but... Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, um, is this a good thing or a bad thing? I, I think it's kind of a loaded question. I don't see how you could say it's a bad thing, but humor me here. Is this a good thing or a bad thing that they lost that trademark over candy? I think it's a no one gives a shit anymore because they suck. <laughs> I guess that's fair enough. The king is dead. <laughs> long live the king? No, no, wait, that's not No, how it no, works. long live the queen. <laughs> Don't you dare! No, <laughs> no, they they just need to go away. Okay, fair enough. All right, uh, moving on. One more story for you guys. Actually, it's a couple of stories because it's updates. We've been talking about Nintendo systems a little bit tonight, and there are some updates to consider when it comes to the Wii U and the 3DS. A new update for the Wii U went out this week. It's version 4.0.3. Um, not a whole lot of features, but they do say overall system stability. Minor adjustments to enhance the user experience. Um, this That's it. No word on, was it maybe trying to patch out some type of exploit? I can't remember if we had an exploit article on the Wii U recently. I feel like we did. Uh, or what they're really trying to do with this. But that is out now. So check that out, I guess. Uh, otherwise, on the 3DS, same deal. Uh, f- improvements to overall system stability and those same adjustments. So it's very curious hmm, what they could really be trying to do there unless you know they're prepping for something coming in the future, maybe to deliver these virtual console games, or who knows, but a lot going on behind the scenes. Of course, the last big upgrade we got on the 3DS bridged the gap between the two. So maybe these firmware updates start to really fix all this with the homogenization of the Nintendo network IDs. Yes. And then uh, Miiverse came to the 3DS in the last patch as well. So these seem to be tweaks to probably get the two to play nicely. It sounds likely. Although I, I didn't notice a problem, but, you know, I'm sure somebody f- figured out a way to do that. There's always problems. People can fix that. <laughs> All right. Well, it is about that time where we uh, we go down a trip of, of memory lane. And, uh, you know, there was a, a time back in the day you didn't get firmware upgrades to your system. When things broke, you blew on the cartridge and prayed. That, that was a firmware update. It's the classic game of the week. Every week, Dark Soccer steps into the gaming vault and finds a game that she thinks, Hey, you kids, you totally ignored this flipping game. Now go play it. Put down your freaking... Call of Duty games and go play a real classic. Dark Soccer, it's yeah. the classic game of the week. The game is Rad Racer. Yay. Yay. Which um, came out in Japan as Highway Star. And it was done by Square for the Famicom in 1987. And you play, you drive a Ferrari 328 or an F1 racing uh, machine through a different race course. And um, the music for this game was done by Uematsu. So... Turn up a little bit. She's not familiar also to people who did strong back emails. Is that familiar? Anyway. So basically I did not realize those two tied together. 
really? Huh. The, the 20XD6 thing when he does the anime thing and he picks the Red Racer theme as his ending song uh, for I, his little strong bad anime. It's been so long. 20XD6. Oh my god. Hey, Stickly Man, what are you doing? <laughs> um, hey, strong bad, I want to be the guy. No. Anyway, um, so basically, uh, you just go through driving the game, kind of pole position like. Um, you can get side swipes, you can crash into stuff, and you can actually uh, crash by hitting other cars too at higher levels. And um, you also can have your uh, time run out. Um, so basically, it's just, you know, still going through, you know, just trying to get from one end of the course to the other. And in Japan, it had a 3D mode that you could use the 3D glasses that came out over there. Um, and also, uh, Square had used that same type of 3D technology with 3D World Runner. Um, and so, uh, the the F1 car, by the way, is supposed to look like the uh, Honda or the Lotus uh, 99T Formula One car, but it everyone plays the Ferrari. I mean, hello. Um, so yeah, this was, I mean, pretty much one of the most popular racing games. You know, the time it came out. Of course, there's been other ones that's been out since. Um, it was also designed by uh, Sakaguchi. The same, yeah. Um, it was also, uh, you know, with... I didn't realize how much ties to Final Fantasy this game had, but I guess it makes sense. Yep. Well, let's see, like I said, this is one of the few titles that was, uh, that used the Famicom 3D system that had the glasses. And, um, this was actually the game that, um, at the time, the Square owner, um, who was, uh, Masafumi Miyamoto, used to, uh, demonstrate how the 3D, the 3D programming that was done by, uh, Nasser Gabelli, who was the uh, programmer for the game. And there was a North American uh, exclusive sequel, Red Racer 2, that had, um, it wasn't really as good as the first Red Racer. I mean, there's really only one Red Racer, which I actually like the Japanese name better because Highway Star, you know, there was the song Highway Star. And anyway, um, this was, uh, it was ranked number eight on Nintendo Power's uh, top 30 poll. Um, it's, just one of the better racing games that's been out. Um, like I said, Red Racer 2. It came out in 1990. It was kind of crap. Um, it played a lot the same, but it really was not as good. It had like a different preview indicator and a turbo boost. No, not good. Um, so yeah. The, now the 3D that came out in this game, as I mentioned another one, it was used by 3D World Runner. And, um, but 3D World Runner was not as great of a sale and it, a, a seller. And so this is actually what led up to Final Fantasy coming out done by, you know, again, uh, we had uh, Sakaguchi and uh, Uematsu behind this. So it was their final attempt, right? Yeah. Pretty much. There was a scene also from this movie that showed up in The Wizard. And yes. that was a scene where Lucas uses the power glove to play through the first stage of the game. Did, did you ever actually get to play these games with the 3D glasses? Because I don't know how many of you got to, like, actually experience these games with 3D glasses. But I, I actually, a friend of mine had Rad Racer with 3D glasses. So I remember playing it. And I got to say, the 3D in Rad Racer actually wasn't very good. I mean, the game, it kind of doesn't lend itself very well to 3D. Which I know sounds weird because it's a racing game. But you already kind of have that perspective. Now, 3D World Runner, on the other hand, which hopefully you'll cover in another week. Because that was a pretty fun game. Mm. Um, the 3D in that game was much better, I thought. That's just, that's my personal well, um, just a little bit more about this, too. Um, they, they said, and I like what the article says, that, that using the Power Glove to play the game was actually considered a feat because of how unreliable the Power Glove was. Um, and Rad Racer is Uematsu's 11th work of video game music composition. And that song was used with vocals for Stinko Man, which was the anime parody um, that Strong Bad did for Homestar Runner. It was a it was a strong bad email, and then um, there was actually a song released by a group called Work Drugs. Uh, it's an electro pop group called Rad Racer, and it has footage from Rad Racer Two used in it. So there we go, Rad Racer. You can all thank Dan for this one because I had forgotten about it. <laughs> Not forgotten about it, but just like I thought I had done it, and every time he suggested, it, it's like, oh, I've done Rad Racer. I've done Rad Racer. No, I haven't done Rad Racer. Now I have, so he can hush. <laughs> there it is. It is rad. It's so rad. Your classic video game of the week, Rad Racer. Her, Rob, her. But the 3D totally overrated in this game. That was one thing. <laughs> that was one thing that. Uh, no, it, it sounds a lot cooler than it really was in execution. Just saying. Hey, Stinko Man, 
I want to. I hear you're the guy, but I want to be the guy too. <laughs> Uh, okay. No way. You're just a kid. I do, how old is, like, aren't those strong bad things like 10 years old now at this point? Something like so that. So sad. <laughs> I can't believe I still, well, actually I'll tell you how I remember it because I just watched it before. Because. Which I'm not, I'm not knocking, that, that shit was hilarious and like, you it's know. It's still funny. Defined the internet a few years ago, but it's kind of sad. I was it's, raised by a cup of coffee. <laughs> Remember Homestar? Remember the uh, Homestar Runner game that was out on uh, like it was on the Wii and I think PC. Yeah. It's like yeah. It's uh, the same company that brought us The Walking Dead years later. Yeah. Funny, funny, funny. All right. Anyhow, we are going to take a break, guys. When we come back, there is plenty more show to come, including your live phone calls at one eight seven seven Game O L R or username on Skype Orange Lounge Radio. Uh, also, some more stories coming up in Part B, including um, some surprise layoffs. That's never any fun news to talk about, but. Uh, yeah, we got to talk about that because it was uh, it was a real shocker. Um, in better news, we'll talk. How about a, how about a big media expansion for a free to play game? I think that's a little bit happier news. We'll talk about that when Orange Hot Radio comes back right after this. Welcome back, everybody, to Orange Lounge Radio, live on March the 2nd of 2014 with the 542nd episode of our program. And uh, lots of fun stuff in Part A. We had a really kind of Nintendo-heavy first half of the show, but it seemed like they had a lot of news going on. And uh, some updates on Steam as well with a fun live poll and so forth. So if you're just joining us because you gave up on that award show that's on TV... Maybe you're pissed off that Miyazaki did not win Best Animated Film, as some people on my uh, Facebook friends list seem to be. But I kind of, kind of, usually those Disney movies tend to win everything, right? Frozen one, of course, and no surprise there. But you know, I'm sure there's a lot of nerds a little pissed off that Miyazaki didn't win. Although I do want to see his movie. I don't get out to see a lot of movies, but uh, all the stuff they put out of his is really good. So I want to go out and see that. So. We'll see. Anyway, um, we are going to get into some rapid fire news. And of course, your calls a little later in the program, as well as your emails to our new mailbag over at participate at orangeloungeradio.com. We'll get to the very first email in our new mailbag in just a little bit. And joining us over the Skype line, Loki. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Background noise. If you guys hear random background noise, that's what's going on. Loki won't be on Skype forever. He will come back to the studio soon, probably around the time we move. Uh, but. Obviously, baby and family take priority, so we are uh, having him having him work from home, and he's going to uh, work with some uh, rapid fire news right now. <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, so, uh, March PlayStation Plus, they have some more free stuff, of course, for instant game collection, including Tomb Raider. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then um, a lot of other PlayStation Network games included with that. Uh, Thomas was alone. Lone Survivor: The Director's Cut, and uh, that's on PlayStation Three. Vita is getting Unit Thirteen and Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, um, and then also I guess uh, they're offering some sales. I guess on Hotline Miami, Escape Plan, Flower, Killzone, Mercenary Tales, Zilla, uh, Dragon's Crown, and Nino Kuni, as well as other things. Uh, no PlayStation. Four stuff, though. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. The Dead Nation Apocalypse Edition is going to be for PlayStation 4. I almost missed that there. Yay, two zombie games back-to-back. -back. There you go, yeah. <laughs> um, Atlas has confirmed uh, four new Persona games for North America. So um, that's kind of cool. Uh, they're going to be getting... Let's see. I wonder if those are the same ones that they announced not too long ago. Uh, Persona Q Shadow Labyrinth. For 3DS, which is supposed to be fall 2014, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, which is going to be, I guess, an, a re-release of Persona 4 Arena that's enhanced. That's going to be coming out in 2014 as well, uh, towards the end of the year. 2015, they've got Persona 4 Dancing All Night, which I guess is a uh, music game, and Persona 5, which would be coming sometime to PlayStation 3 in 2015. Uh, also, not to be left out, um, Xbox, the games with gold, are going to be getting two games for the month of March, starting off with Civ Revolution, um, so that's going to be pretty cool, and Dungeon Defenders, which is the Xbox Live Arcade game. Uh, Civ, uh, Civilization Revolution is going to be free through March 16th, and then, of course, Dungeon Defenders is going to be after that for the remainder of the month. 
So, Rob, uh, Civ Rev, is that a good one to start off with? Because I actually haven't played any Civ games at all. I think Civ Rev is a great one to start out with. I know some people had its issues with it because of the way it translates to controller play. But to me, uh, Civilization Revolution has a lot in common with the very, very first Civilization game, which is still one of my favorites. I, I think a, a dumbed down, using my quotey fingers, a dumbed down Civilization game is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it kind of gets you you know, kind of into the series and what it's all about. And if you like it, then you can step up and play, you know, Civ 4 or Civ 5 or one of the newer ones, which Civ 5 is still great. And if you didn't grab it during that Sid Meier hum Humble Bundle, though, I don't know what to tell you because that, that was your chance and you blew it if you didn't get the Sid Meier Bundle. I so, did not. Well, you blew it. Cause that, That's I mean, all right. It'll be on sale. I, they're really the only one I wanted to play was Civ 5 out of the whole bunch. So I didn't really feel the, necess feel yeah. the need to spend more than $10 on it. I understand. I understand. Um, and last but not least, you had another game getting zombie DLC, but this one's a little strange. Warehouse and Logistics Simulator. It's a sim game. It's getting zombie DLC. And uh, that's just kind of silly. Wait, that's a but, real game? There's a game called Warehouse and Logistics Simulator? I've never heard of this. <laughs> yes, it is. These are some of the games that are more popular in Steam. You may not realize it, like Farming Sim and stuff like that, just because it's kind of strange. Or, or what uh, about the Euro Truck Driver Simulator 2 or that, yeah. that crazy shit? Yeah. And, and this is not the only game that I know that's in the Simulator series that's actually gotten zombie DLC. If I remember correctly, I want to say one of the Train Sim games, either it was a mod or DLC that did get zombie dlc or something for it and it was kind of silly but yeah it has you like driving through a warehouse in a forklift trying to escape zombies <laughs> i don't know it's just strange <laughs> um it's very but strange. i guess you uh you mow down the um you know the undead they say they can get bombs mines and other weapons to help you clear out the zombies hey you gotta know your audience or at least maybe that might get a few more people to try warehouse and logistics simulator which that's got to be a pretty niche audience right there. Over at our chat room over at live.vognetwork.com, Hitstun says Euro Truck 2 is great. Honk. Yes, is that a. I have to check out the game at some point. And uh, SSJ100 Matt referring, I think, to the background noise. SSJ100 Matt wants to know what's for dinner and did you bring enough for the class, Loki? <laughs> that was my wife cooking dinner, so I don't know. <laughs> All right, fair enough. All right, uh, I got some news for you guys. Moving on. Um, this was a little bit controversial last week. Uh, some talk about Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zeroes, which, again, was supposed to be kind of like that... I, I don't want to call it like the starter chapter, or Brit but I guess that's really what it is. It was supposed to be a short kind of Metal Gear Solid game, very short Metal Gear Solid game, um, that was going to kind of tide us over until Phantom Pain was released. And it was only supposed to be a couple hours. Well, they were going to release the game for $40. However... The physical PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions had their price cut this week down to $30. And in a statement, the company said they wanted to, quote, provide as many people as possible an opportunity to play the game. In other words, you guys weren't having that shit. It's very, it's, it's really fascinating how the internet kind of turned the price of that game around. That's pretty awesome there. So, uh, well, I mean, I don't know. I, I say it's awesome, but maybe, you know, if the game is to make a profit for Konami, maybe it's not so awesome. I don't know. But um, we'll see. A lot of people seem to be happy with the news nonetheless. Uh, the 3DS over at Nintendo is going to be having a promotion that will uh, allow you a free download of Pokemon X or Y. That's right. When you get a new Nintendo 3DS or 3DS XL or even a 2DS system, uh, as well as one of six select games to a Club Nintendo account, you get a free download code for Pokemon X or Y. This is only between March 1st and 31st, and the eligible games are Mario Kart 7, Super Mario 3D Land, Animal Crossing, if you want to experience Ed in your town, just like Dark Soccer did. Uh, I would not wish that on anyone. Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, Lego City Undercover, and Yoshi's New Island. If you get one of those six games in a new 3DS, you tie them to your Club Nintendo account. Nintendo's going to give you a download code for Pokemon X or Y, and you got to use it by May 31st, 2014. I, I guess, you know, I'm, uh, who isn't a fan of free games? But my thought is, I thought everybody who wanted Pokemon X or Y, like, they fucking got their 3DS by now so they could experience this i guess maybe there's maybe there's some holdouts and if you were one of the holdouts congrats <laughs> free game for you so there you go that promotion throughout march and lastly for me uh new tony hawk game uh, when was the last time you heard about us talking about a new tony hawk game it's been a little Isn't while he like 50 probably hey 
you're never too old to uh, skate. I don't know. I got well, they just had the, uh, the rails. HD one came out. Yeah, I, I thought there was like one not that long ago, but that wasn't the beginning of the end when they put out that like hundred dollar skateboard thing because you know oh, God. they thought yeah. since Guitar Hero worked and people bought that peripheral, people would buy the. Uh, yeah, it didn't quite work out for him. Well, Tony Hawk is returning, but get this. It's a mobile phone game. Womp womp. Tony Hawk talking to Bloomberg said, We're working on a game for mobile devices this year. We've never gone exclusively in that direction, so I'm excited because with the amount of time people are spending on their phones and their tablets playing games, we've never had our own game in that space. So I'm excited to provide one finally. Well, that ought to get all two of you who care about that, a Tony Hawk game on your mobile phone. Look, I'm not shading the Tony Hawk series. They were great games, but they're just they're going to suck on a mobile phone. Let's just keep it real. It's going to suck. Sorry. And not in the fun kind of way. That's right. <laughs> well, how about some uh, different gaming news? How about it? Um, well, there's, a def- there's something coming out about... Uh, a potential Minecraft movie done by the Lego movie producer. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how I feel about that. So, um, but Notch basically said that, uh, there was a talk going on about it, that they're working with Warner brothers about a potential, uh, Minecraft movie. So whatever. Um, also, uh, retro studios is saying that, uh, the Wii U is a powerhouse. And is confirming that they're developing a game for it, but they haven't really said what exactly. But they're uh, able to use, uh, they're learning new HD techniques like pixel shading and stuff and things. And that they loved working with Donkey Kong. So maybe that will be cool. Now, I want to say that the reason why you're on the fence with the whole Minecraft movie thing is because you probably haven't gone to see the Lego movie yet. No, I haven't. Which is a travesty. At some, at some point, I'll get out. I don't care about the Lego movie. Eh. Were we supposed to have a friend date? We were, and it just didn't happen because, you know, move and busyness and stuff. Oh, hi, kitty. Sorry. <laughs> Sinbio <laughs> came out. You I got distracted st- by cats? Kitty. Fair enough. I just heard, meh, 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 meh. And then the Konami code works in Bravely Default. Um... It's basically supposed to uh, work once you've completed the game. Um, but there's a clip about what happens. It's online somewhere. So that's kind of cool. Um, it's And for those who don't know, I'm not going to tell you because you should fucking know this. I'm kidding. It's up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, start. On the main no, menu. No, you should know that. Don't tell them that. <laughs> well, unless you're playing Parodius, then you do it backwards. Okay. So. Or if you're playing, wh- which one was it where you had to use the LR on top of the Super Nintendo controller or it blew up your ship? Was that Gradius 3, maybe? Like maybe Gradius 3? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. All right. Well, if that's it for uh, Rapid Fire News, then we shall take a trip over to Facebook and Google+. Plus. And when you slam those words together, you get Google. It's Radio Google. <laughs> the Fugle question of the week, everybody. We ask a question of our Facebook and Google Plus communities, and uh, we get answers, your answers, over on uh, those various sites. And uh, we're going to start off tonight with some of the answers from Google Plus to our question. And I got to say, things got a little weird on Google Plus this week. And I, I like, I'm seeing people answer who I never see answer. And, um, like some of it was getting a little heated which I'm kind of not okay with so just remember everybody treat each other with respect over on Google Plus and now for some reason I can't get the post to come up that's not good that's a little embarrassing when we're doing live radio where is it there it is phew yeah see just just to put it out there we have 16 responses on Google Plus and I think that's more than we have on Facebook that's not normal <laughs> Something happened there. This is not expected behavior. This is not expected behavior. I don't know what's up with that. But uh, regardless, strangers were jumping in there telling each other that opinions were wrong and stuff. And I'm not okay with that. This is where every gamer has a voice. Let them be heard. Act Def starts us off with a haiku. Well, I'll read his full response since he took the time to give a haiku as well. Oh, I didn't even read the damn question. Sorry, guys. How do you feel about the news that Nintendo is pulling online support for DS and Wii games in a couple months? Will you miss playing Mario Kart Wii Online, or do you think it's best that these servers come down to make way for the future? 
And Act Deft over on Google Plus said, well, with these games getting old and with so little people playing them, it was only a matter of time for the servers to be shut down. Specifically, since Nintendo probably wants to save money rather than lose it right now. It's sad, but I think it's time to move on, people. And here's the haiku. Servers are shut down. New games are coming soon now. Nintendo needs cash. Uh, a Jake F. replied on Google+, Plus, and he's a little mad about this situation. He's upset. He sounds a little upset. Uh, Jake says, I have no purpose for playing Smash Brothers now. Thanks a ton, Nintendo. Nintendo, I support you. I swim against the current for you. I get made fun of because of you. I'm among the few to defend you in front of the masses of PlayStation and Microsoft fanboys. And this is what I get. Guess it really is time for a PlayStation 3. Okay, over-dramatization added by me. But it is Oscar night, everybody. Uh, for, for your consideration. But um, did you never learn to read? I'm th <laughs> I'm thinking Jake was playing Smash. Is you know we ask who's still playing online? Well, Jake is apparently playing Smash Brothers online. He's a little heated. So uh, there you go. He might jump ship over to PlayStation Three. Uh, Redertainment says online foreign to Big N. I don't care about Big N shutdown plans. Yet another haiku answer. I'm loving this, you guys. Loving it. Uh, let's see some other answers here. Uh, Matt D replied and said it stinks, but they need the server space for their other newer games that and maintaining the old ones along with the new ones would cost a ton of money. Uh, Zordrak shadow Fang, and I'm sure that's his real name said it's the price of online servers to handle multiplayer. Eventually they get shut down. At least these games otherwise still work offline in both single player and local multiplayer. And lastly, AJ Twist replies and said, eh, it's more proof that Nintendo doesn't understand online. But maybe something good will come of this? We'll see. Again, those are some of the answers over from Google+. Plus. I was not going to read answers from people that were like, you know, thank you for your insightful commentary and just kind of weird stuff. So I wonder how that happened. Is that because uh, Google+, Plus like, automatically tags things so it went out to a more public audience? I don't even know. Whatevers. Uh, moving on to some of our answers over on Facebook at facebook.com slash orange lounge radio. We had quite a few answers. I'm only going to read a handful of these. So I apologize in advance, uh, but I encourage you to check out all the answers at facebook.com slash orange lounge radio. Uh, Monty Boggs says, I won't miss them, but it does seem like convenient timing considering Mario Kart eight comes out a week or so after that. Something we had uh, brought up on the show earlier. Um, our friend Wicked from the Nerdgasm Network says, The fact that Nintendo is ending their online services for Wii and DS isn't surprising. Most games and services tend to sever servers after some years, especially when the newest iteration releases. What is surprising is the sudden urgency of it's being done. On May 20th, the 3DS will have been out for three years and the Wii U only a year and a half. I know that seems like a decent grace period, but if the sales numbers are correct, I doubt the Wii's 101, 101 million owners have all upgraded, given the Wii U's almost 6 million sold. I'm not saying they should keep the Wii servers on forever, but I think they should keep them up a little bit longer, at least until the chasm light gap has closed up a bit more. But you know what's interesting about that? I mean, it's not that I disagree with what we could say in here, but... And it's kind of a question we ask ourselves in general. Are these gaming companies under any liability to keep these servers up a certain time? They're really not. I don't think so. We're at their mercy, which as a consumer kind of sucks. But isn't unexpected. It's not. But I mean, at one point, do we say, God damn it, this is what I paid for and it ought to work. This is what I paid for eight years ago and it ought to work. Well, no. I mean, but... This mixing board we bought eight years ago, and it's still working. And it's if it broke tomorrow, I'm not just going to be like, oh well, you know, I'm just, oh, well, Radio Shack took it offline. Well, we didn't get it at Radio Shack; we ordered it from the manufacturer. You know still. what I mean? Yeah, I know. Anyway, uh, let's see, and uh, let's see. Our Power and A says this move was inevitable, I think, and telling of what's to come for Nintendo. Dropping the Wi-Fi connection for the DS and Wii really is the sign that Nintendo is moving forward and will soon discontinue manufacturing and support for those two systems. Who knows? Maybe this means Nintendo is at least thinking of their next console system. Well, Renee, they're definitely thinking about it. They, they plan that stuff years and years in advance. Uh, there's probably already early prototypes. That's how long these things take to develop, honestly. We had those rumors a couple weeks ago, for better or for worse, about the more homogenized Nintendo experience. But, um, I, again, it's weird to me that they're dropping DS when they're just going to bring it out again over on the virtual consoles. A little weird. A little weird. Uh, lastly, Giovedea. Uh, says, it's not expected, and as long as I can still play the DLC content without Wi-Fi, I'm okay. Mainly because I haven't used it, even with owning the games. At least with the DS, there's still the option of local play, right? 
Yep, that is true, and that's going to have to suffice for those of you guys that decide to spend the money on the games. All right, that's going to do it for now for the Fugal Question of the Week. Again, please uh, read all the responses because they're really good over at uh, facebook.com slash orange lounge radio. Let's get back into some gaming news with Loki. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Zynga. Um, they had a lawsuit, or I guess a fraud lawsuit, which unfortunately was dismissed. And uh, because of this, now the plaintiff's plan to uh, change their complaint. Uh, basically, the um, original complaint, which was 110 pages long, failed to offer relevant basic factual details, which I'd say is kind of a, an important part of any sort of lawsuit. <laughs> um, they're also saying that uh, because of that, they're going to, uh, I guess, resubmit with some further evidence and that kind of stuff. Um, I think this has to do with, I want to say, um, they were talking about maybe their initial stock offering and stuff like that. Um, don't know if it's necessarily, you know, nothing to do with, of course, their cloning of games or anything like that, but maybe some insider trading. I don't know. Sounds all very complicated. <laughs> I don't like Zynga. <laughs> it is a little bit. Well, I think that, you know, the IPO fraud thing is just ba basically, long story short, they said the company was worth more than it really was. And um, again, that kind of goes back to the whole flash in a pan thing is that well, Zynga, Zynga was riding a huge high when they went for the IPO and the bubble burst. And maybe some people believe that they kind of should have seen that coming. Well, look at look at it this way. Look at it. They're trying to do. It's almost like King is following Zynga's you know, game plan almost. They had a flash in the pan game come out and now they have all these games with Saga at the end. They're kind of using Saga as almost their vill, if you will. And that's the thing with any of these companies, you know, especially nowadays that yeah, at one time it may be worth, you know, X amount of dollars, but it doesn't mean that these games are making that kind of money indefinitely. It's just people eventually move on to the next big thing or even the next just popular thing. We experience a very fickle market. Mm-hmm. Indeed. It's very casual. No one's really dedicated. All right. Well, uh, speaking of it being a fickle market, this was very surprising. Um, some layoffs occurring at Sony Santa Monica. These are the guys that developed God of War. And um, obviously, there's going to be another God of War game in the pipeline. That's not a surprise. So it's, it's, it's a little weird to me, especially when PlayStation is kind of riding a high right now, that there are layoffs at the studio. And I want to say, didn't they just have like some PR layoffs and things like that a while ago? So this is really weird that this struggle is happening, I guess, at Sony Santa Monica. But uh, yes, uh, Sony did put out a statement nice little PC statement that said uh, Sony Computer Entertainment America can confirm that we have completed a reduction in wor workforce at Santa Monica Studio. This is the result of a cycle of resource realignment against priority growth areas within SCE WWS. We do not take these decisions lightly. However, sometimes it is necessary to make changes to better serve the future products of the studio, projects of the studio, excuse me. We have offered outplacement services and severance packages to ease transition for those impacted. So I get the sense from this and, and the rumors are definitely out there that um, Sony was working on something that got canceled. And this is a result of that. Uh, and if you want to further believe rumors, again, huge salt lick of salt, but some uh, rumors, that, rumors that are out there is that it was a project that was very similar to Destiny um, and uh, didn't look like it was going to compete well with it, I guess, at the end of the day. I don't really know how else to easily put that. Um, but again, rumor, huge rumor. Take it with a grain of salt. Uh, but regardless, it, it is uh, really odd to see you know such a big studio that produces titles like God of War going through these reductions, and even more so when you consider it's it's coming a week after we just heard about this a similar thing from a studio we didn't expect, Irrational Games, right? So this begs the question: What the hell is going on, Loki? Any thoughts? What the hell is going on? I don't know. Well, Irrational, we know what the situation was, that they just wanted to go a different direction. Um, Sony Santa Monica, maybe they just have a... Um, I don't know. There's downsizing. Maybe they have like another team that's going to be working on God of War. I don't, I don't really know. 
Well, still sad to hear, and uh, I doubt we have anybody who worked for them that was impacted listening to the show, but just in case we do, uh, and that, this goes for Rational or any studio that we report in, um, our thoughts are with you guys, and uh, it, it does sound like a lot of people were after those guys at Irrational, so it seems like there are jobs available somewhere. I just uh, I hope you can find them in a place that works uh, for you and your family, and best of luck. Sorry to hear about that. That's no fun. I, I, That's I, poopy. So what if the game was similar to Destiny? You know what? We've we've had similar games coexist for a long time, and it, it works out. Anyway, uh, Dark Soccer, what do you have for us? Well, there's some other news that uh, it's it could be bad news for some people. It could be decent news for others. But um, you know how we were talking about how um, there was the regist- uh, re- uh, regulation going about about uh, those multiple little transactions that happen in games. Um, now there are uh, meetings going on with representatives from the UK, France, Belgium, Denmark, and other EU uh, members to go about uh, creating rules for about apps um, that ask for how much and when these apps can pay for uh, ask for payment information. Um, they've also got uh, representatives from multiple different uh, developers, including Nintendo, um, uh, Electronic Arts, Google, a few others. Um, basically trying to make sure that these games are not misleading or um, exploit the, the market. So we'll see how that goes. I wonder if we would ever have anything like that here. But um, it's basically uh, going to be a... Uh, you know, this is coming right after the uh, UK group, which is the Office of Fair Trading, was basically saying, you know, hey, get it in order or uh, we're going to enforce it. So, don't know how it's going to happen. Hmm. We'll see, won't we? We will. Hmm. Or they will. I don't know. <laughs> Of course, if they have to uh, change something for Europe, it's going to impact everybody else. I mean, well, not necessarily, but it probably will. We'll see. We might actually see them proactively um, working in the U.S. market mm. to, you know, let's get it done now before we get it forced on us. All right, moving on. Loki. So South Park, the stick of truth, um, unfortunately, was censored in certain countries. They have basically said that there's five versions of the game. Um, one for North America, South America, Europe, Germany, Australia, and Russia. Um, the North America, South America one is completely uncensored on every platform. The Australia one is censored on all platforms, or the Australia one is censored on all platforms. European one and Russian ones are censored on console only, and the German one is censored on the console for anal probing, etc. <laughs> and so, but the way they, they got about it is kind of, if you remember um, the South Park episodes where they were showing, supposed to be showing the image of Muhammad, and it was just kind of like, you know, this thing with a text box saying, you know, we would have shown an image of Muhammad, but blah, 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 blah. Well, so they have a, <laughs> they have this image that pops up as all, you lose again, Europe, this scene where you, were tr- <laughs> you tried to disable the force field around Randy, but instead accidentally forced the probing machine next to him to probe his ass with violent force is not meant for your eyes. Randy, in obvious rectal pain, urges you to proceed onward. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so <laughs> they explain all this stuff in there, but uh, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, it's just stuff that they have to do to get around, you know, certain laws um for decency and stuff but um yeah i mean if it's that much of a bother for you and you do live in those countries remember the playstation 3 is region free so import away oh that's a good thought that uh you could just if when you want to get around censorship just import from another country you think there'll be a lot of people that actually do that now that they know that that's out there probably not hmm interesting I know if it was my country, I would. But then again, importing games can be expensive. All right. Um, moving on. We were talking about free-to-play games a minute ago. And uh, one of my favorites that came along last year, which uh, a lot of people were talking about, is Path of Exile. Uh, Path of Exile is a Diablo-esque style game that came out from Grinding Gear Games. And uh, apparently it's been doing very well for itself. Uh, they've held very strong to the standard that they're going to do ethical free-to-play, meaning that they don't sell experience boosts, they don't sell weapon upgrades, they sell like um, like 
flashy things like pets and like you know, cosmetic stuff only. And uh, apparently it's been working out for them. Uh, this developer who is based in New Zealand, they have over 5 million registered players, hundreds of thousands playing at any given time. And they just announced this week an expansion, the sacrifice of Val. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. V A A L Val is uh, coming out next week. Free. PvP content, a new race of dark magic wielders, and you can charge up super-powered weapons by killing monsters, uh, but no change to the monetization property. Or, excuse me, no, no change to the monetization policy. And uh, lead designer Chris Wilson says, we don't want to compromise the game. Uh, we want to make a really good game that people love to play. So it's, it seems like it's working out for them. Uh, they do kind of mention that, you know, we could make more money if we are, you know, if we were to do more of the pay to win model, but uh, people apparently are into the cosmetic stuff. They like to show off and uh, it's, it's because people view this as a bit of a hobby. And uh, they, in the path of exile store, they sell a big blue scorpion for $110 and they've actually sold a few hundred of those. You got the money, hey. I yeah, if you got the money and you want to support the game enough. I mean, it's in in a way it's kind of like, you know, people give thousands of dollars to these Kickstarter projects for games and they just for an opportunity to be involved and so forth. So if people have that type of money to give to something they really believe in. How many of us bought charity pets for WoW? Yeah, well, because that was charity. Well, yeah, but sort still, I mean, it's the investing money into something you you would support, right? Right. There's people who buy the pets for WoW just because hey pet uh. Not just the charity pets. And to be fair, I mean, $110, I mean, that sounds like a lot of money. And it is, don't get me wrong. But it's also, what, two copies of a new video game? Two, two vi That's Maybe. the price of two regular video games. And Path of Exile is a game that some people are getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours out of. So is that really that much money? Maybe not. A game like World of Warcraft, I mean, over a year's time for a $12 subscription fee, shit, you've paid $144. So is $110, is $110 Scorpion really that crazy? Maybe not. So anyway, uh, so yeah, if you're into Path of Exile, um, check that out for uh, the new expansion that's coming out this week. I know I will be checking that out too. I hope the game doesn't crush under that, all those people wanting to check it out. We'll see. All right, Loki, you got one more story for us before we get to the mailbag. Yeah, uh, real quick. Um, Apple TV, we've been, you know, saying, hey, you know, if Apple adds games to Apple TV, that could be a killer device. Well, another one of these rumors coming out saying, you know, reliable industry sources say that Apple TV will be getting game support in an update, uh, likely to come in March or earlier. Well, I'm going to say at this point it's going to be March because, you know, we're in March. <laughs> uh, but they're saying that apparently developers are working uh, with on Bluetooth controller options, and um, you know they're saying that could you know work directly with Apple TV rather than relying on another iOS device as an intermediary, um, and basically saying that you know game support could be backwards compatible with current generation Apple TV, although you know they would expect that. You know, you would want um, maybe iCloud support because the Apple TVs don't really have much storage space. Um, it would be interesting if, if they did that. I, I don't know. I thought the Apple TVs weren't that powerful, so it, maybe if they release a new they, well, but they've got to be version. about as they've got to be about as powerful as Anuya. Let's be real, <laughs> right? That's true, but I would think that maybe they're gonna maybe release a new version or something. Because you know, if you want to show off like you know HD gaming or something like that, I would think that maybe like a new version of Apple TV or something yeah. for maybe it, it two hundred bucks would be interesting. It does seem about that time of year where Tim Cook ought to get up on the stage and talk about what's happening over at Apple. Um, I know, uh, you know, because we usually have the iPhone thing and that's later in the year or God, then they started kind of flipping the script and it was earlier in the year for, for a little bit, but iPads were usually early in the year. Like I do feel like, Hmm, it's been a good four or five months since we've had a big Apple pump and circumstance, you know, and Apple TV would be a thing that you'd think they would update. Although I would be very curious, like what else is Apple working on? There's been buzz for a very long time, you know, because it seems Correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like ever since Tim Cook took over, we haven't really seen new, per se. I mean, we've seen improvements to existing things like iPhone and iPad and, and so forth. But but there's been rumblings forever now that, oh, Apple's going to get into television and Apple's going to get into this or that. And we haven't seen that yet. And I think a lot of us are 
are really waiting for. Like, what's Apple's next card to play? Well, I think, yeah, they're trying to get into new new spaces, basically, instead of, you know, trying to put out something else. I, I would be very skeptical that they would put out a TV, just because TV technology is changing so much. And, you know, the price point of a TV that was, you know, would have some sort of Apple integration on it. I just, I would think that they would go like the Apple TV route because it would be cheaper and just, you know, plug that into a normal, you know, TV. Why would you want, you know, the super high res TV that I guess you would only get content from Apple with for it. But I, I, I don't think they would go that route. But like, I know one of the things that people have been saying for a while now is you know a watch that they have you know oh yeah their wonderful you know office with the curved glass windows and stuff that maybe they're going <laughs> dinner's to, done uh... <laughs> hey that's josh's lunch somebody's uh, watch is going off right now <laughs> yeah um uh, you know that they have that office with the curved glass and everything that they're supposed to be using some sort of like curved glass technology or curved display for like a watch type thing so i wonder if that's you know, possibility. That's like straight up Dick Tracy right there. Remember, God, I'm probably dating myself. Remember like Dick Tracy? I mean, the originals were like from the 1930s. I'm not that old, y'all. But I know they had a resurgence in the 90s and that movie came out with Warren Beatty. And he used to have like the little like TV on a watch where he would talk to people. And like, I could fucking see Apple doing that. Like FaceTime on the fucking watch. Like it, it would be here for real. But I don't know, for me, I don't like watches. I don't know. I used to wear them as a kid, but I don't really wear them anymore. But I just don't know, like, maybe they would do that as your phone or something, because, I mean, everyone really has, like, m- most people have a smartphone now, so it would be just kind of weird to have, like, oh, this is just an iPod, you know, but it's a watch. Watches are the domain of hipsters now. <laughs> well, yeah, it's I a dangerous combination. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see. What, I, I feel like we've heard this rumor out of Apple before, but uh, we'll see. You know, sometimes where there's smoke, there's fire, but uh, it could just be... A big poot, too. We'll see what sure. happens next time uh, Tim Cook takes the stage. If they plan something around E3, watch yourself. But otherwise, probably no big deal. Didn't they actually do a press conference during E3 one time? I seem to remember, like, like not at E3, just coincidentally it was, like, the same time. Like, I seem to remember Apple was doing a huge press conference, like, the exact same time as somebody else. Anyway, yeah. random tangent. Speaking of random tangents, why don't we open up our brand new email bag over at participate at orangeloungeradio.com where you guys email us every week your thoughts, your comments, your questions here on the show. And most thankfully this week over in the new email address, no spam. Glorious. Glorious. So sorry to those of you guys who are still trying to use the old email address, but we had to take drastic measures. So again, if you want to email the show, participate at orangelaundrader.com is the place to do so. Let's get to it. Dark Soccer, who has the honor of being our very first emailer in the new mailbag? That would be AZHP. Hey, OLR crew, AZHP here. Rob was wondering last week why people are so interested in Twitch Plays Pokemon and also bemoan the fact that there were so many knockoffs. I'd like to give an explanation for the first question. An explanation for why other games don't work. First, I think the reason that people are interested in Twitch Plays Pokemon is because the community is creating a narrative for all the things, good and bad, that happen. When a normal person plays Pokemon, there isn't much dramatic tension. You're going to level up, you're going to fight, you're going to use your best attacks, and if you don't win, you'll level up some more. With uh, TPP, every time you fight a gym leader, you don't know if... Pidgeot is going to use sand attack seven times in a row, or if Lapras will sing repeatedly before killing the enemy in one attack. When you're trying to catch Zap- uh, Zapdos, you don't worry about whether or not you're going to accidentally toss your Master Ball or use it on a Pokemon you weren't intending to catch, or just straight up running away from Zapdos immediately after finding him. All these things are possibilities in TPP. Add to the fact that you can really f- feel like you're contributing by coming up with plans and rallying people behind them, you've got a recipe for a fairly interesting time. That's a good point. The people who have who've tried to start different types of games with the same principle don't understand the reason why Twitch Plays Pokemon is actually engaging to watch. There are several criteria a game must meet in order to be playable via chat with delay. A game must not be turn-based with little to no timing involved. Um... Let's see. Game must not uh, reset your progress when you die. Game must not have an option to exit to main menu or soft reset. 
you can see that there are very few games that don't meet criteria too, much less all three. For instance, Bioshock doesn't reset your progress when you die, but you can pause and quit the game, and controlling Bioshock with a 30-second delay would be incredibly difficult. For those reasons, I can think of no other game besides Pokemon that is interesting when played via crowdsourcing. Additionally, there is such a deep love of Pokemon, and there is so much variety to the strategies in, Poke in Pokemon, that nearly everyone can have an opinion on what should be done in the game. I hope I was able to shed some light on Twitch Plays Pokemon. As for this, um, as of this writing, February 27th, Thursday, Twitch is on the road to the Elite Four, but it seems like they're going to be stuck in Victory Road for a while due to the one-way ledges and boulder puzzles which bar their way, along with the high-level random encounters and trainers. I wonder where they'll be when you guys read this email. Love always, AZHP, OLR's Premier Gold Star recipient. Well, there you go. And, uh, there you go. And now you get the honor of being the first emailer at uh, Participate. But, um, I, you know, a lot of what you say makes sense. And certainly the fact that, you know, Twitch will, or excuse me, Pokemon will not throw you all the way back to the beginning when you, uh, you know, lose or whatever is, is a key component. Um, but yeah, I, I still I still worry that this is the type of thing where it's like it's 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 lightning in the bottle. It's it's a flash in the pan. I I, I don't take that too offensively. I'm just saying that I kind of don't think this is going to have the longevity people think it does because there's going to be so many knockoffs and things like that. And you do outline what makes this work versus Mario Brothers and so forth. There's no denying that. But I would even suggest if you were to take other RPGs, which would be prime candidates based on the criteria you've outlined there. It's not going to work forever. And once you get too many of them, it's going to dilute a lot. Now, what, what, what this does bring to the table, because I don't want to make this sound negative because it's not, because obviously people have noticed and developers have noticed and other gamers and the people who make games have noticed. And I think what you're going to see as a result of this is you're going to see more interactivity within games. We're already starting to see that a little bit as we got into last week with Tomb Raider and um, what are some of the, there's another new one out there that does this too, but the, that people will be inter be able to interact with the Twitch streams in different ways. And I think that is the door that Twitch plays Pokemon is, is opening. But um, I don't, I don't really see Twitch Plays Pokemon as something we're going to be talking about six months from now. I, funny enough, I think it's coming up again later in the show because we want to give an update on where it's at. And don't get me wrong, fascinating experiment. Crazy how probably more people have watched Twitch Plays Pokemon than some second-tier basic cable channel. Probably more people were watching Twitch Plays Pokemon than were watching G4. Let's be <laughs> <laughs> for you know so that, that let's not underestimate what what has happened there but uh, it's all happened very quickly too it, it, it accounted two weeks and things like this tend to go as fast as they come but if i'm wrong i'm wrong hey eh. i'm sorry I'm, i've got a cough drop that's okay i got a glass of wine yeah well i had some. let's mix them just kidding that's gross dear olr and friends of olr I just specifically want to take a moment here and now to give thanks to you guys. Specifically, I wanted to thank Rob Roberts, Gimmit, Captain Spike, and Exifer for giving me advice and strength I didn't think I had. It is with their help that I was finally able to come out to my family and therefore the rest of the world. The support I've received from everyone is amazing, despite all my fears, and I've yet to encounter a single negative reaction to it. I feel closer to my family now than I've ever felt before, with my mom, dad, brothers, and sister all sending me messages and calling me just to tell me how proud they are. I wish I hadn't been afraid to tell them in the first place. I can honestly say that the way I feel now is probably the happiest I've ever felt in my entire life. I needed this release, and I have a word of advice to anyone who still isn't out. If you feel that your family and friends will accept you no matter what your sexuality is, then just tell them. The support and love that you can get in return is just so worth it. Again, thank you so very much. With love, Osfer. Mm. I don't know what to say. That's great. That's fantastic. That's that's um I'm very very happy to hear it. I'm 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 happy to hear that you had that and that you um you had that, you know, um welcomeness in your family and so forth and and that uh, everything everything went went really good for you and congratulations on that big step and um I know that has nothing to do with video gaming, but I I really don't give a shit because as long as we're going to continue to have talks about you know, everything from why do we need a gay gamer convention, which I've talked to death about before on the show, to not to get too political here, but I have to. This is my life we're talking about here. We have to talk about when people want to pass laws where people are going to be able to refuse you service just because of, you know, what you are. Like, that shit is, like, obviously we're cockulous, and thank God 
you know, somebody came to her senses and said, you know, maybe this is a bad idea. Well, did you see the um, the restaurants that were putting up signs that says uh, we reserve the right to refuse uh, uh, service to uh, Arizona legislators? Right. How does it feel? How does it feel? But yeah. any, but but there's 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 also something that one of the things that really, 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 really bothers me that some people have the perception of, of gays and lesbians and so forth is that it's a choice. Being a legislator is a choice. Being gay not a choice. I, 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 I am happy to tell you firsthand. I did not. I, I, I am a gay man and I did not wake up one day and go, you know what? I think I'll be gay. I think, I think from here on out, I'm going to be gay. It's not how it works, people. I, and whoever's telling you is, d- doesn't know what they're Ask talking about. Ask them when about. they decided to be straight. Right? Anyhow, I could go on a whole nother tangent here because there's been a lot of chatter this week about when are we ever going to have a triple A video game with a, a gay lead character and s- s- one big developer decided to come out and say, eh, probably never to, to all this other stuff. And, you know, the continued whenever I see Gamer X, there's a great story that's run on them. There's always that first comment. Well, I'm going to have straight Gamer Con. You know what? Every time you say that, it's like you sound exactly like the people who ask about White History Month. It's 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 just no, it's that's what it is. It's people not wanting their own ableist and mar- and marginalizing behavior brought out to the forefront. You know, when you get thrown in a trash can because you're straight, when you get threatened with violence because you're straight. When you get called straight because you're bad at a video game, we'll have a conversation. Until then, knock it off. Don't even get me started on the people who say, well, that's not a sexuality at all. You anyway. know, yeah, I, people just need to stop putting labels on other people. I don't care who fucks who or who can't fuck anybody else mm-hmm. or what people do with their bits as long as I don't have to know about it. Mm-hmm. I don't care. No one else should care. It's no one's business. At the end of the day, isn't love better than hate? At the end of the day, tacos are better. <laughs> <laughs> I do love tacos. Okay, then. All right. Anyway, I, I didn't mean to just... just to, no, that's I, I went on a crazy-ass tangent from Oscar's email. Congratulations, my friend. This this drink's for you. I already drank on mine, or I would. Okay. This comes from my good friend, Catastrophic Muggy, who I chat with every so often. Not as much as I would like to since we were time zones apart and I have a job now. Farewell, mailba- mailbag. Hello, participation. Also, and he gives me a link. I um, hope it gets a Euro release and that the second one comes out too. This is Shin Megami Tensei coming to iOS. And it's actually, you know, old school Atlas Joy. Um, it's going to be out um, on the 18th. Uh, set in Tokyo, and you know what? I may just actually get this game because hey, Shin Megami Tensei, and I've been meaning to play it, so why not? It's going to be eight ninety. Uh, it's going to be seven ninety nine, and it'll be about forty to sixty hours to beat. So maybe I'll eventually finish it this year. Thank you, Muggy, for sending me the mail. Hey, OLR, or hi, OLR, I should say. It's Regenerator. I just have a question regarding PC gaming. Seeing as I'm still reasonably new to the PC gaming scene. I know that typically people would do their gaming on a desktop if only because with desktops you can upgrade the PC's innards to boost performance. However, since I'm doing my gaming on a laptop, that isn't a possibility as far as I know outside of upgrading the hard drive or RAM. So my question is twofold. Is it possible to tweak a laptop settings to boost its performance even if the increase is only marginal? By the way, yes. Um, There are different uh, graphical accelerators and... Um, if you've got an NVIDIA capable uh, type of uh, card built in, they actually do release um, an optimization thing for NVIDIA. Uh, actually, AMD has one too. It's, yeah. it's got Raptor built in, which some people have kind of the mixed feelings on. And I, I'm going to be honest, uh, I've gotten some better settings using different things, but but it will give you a good benchmark. Uh, like I used it for like Diablo 3 and Final Fantasy 14, and the games do run really well um, using the AMD because I have an AMD graphics card, and they work. it works well, but uh, you can always tweak it and get something a little better maybe. Just be careful if you're on a laptop because laptop cooling is crap. Yes, and I would say before you ever really push something to its limits like that, please read up on it because it's not... RTFM. It's not always... And I want to put this big disclaimer. 
that you know if your computer sets on fire because you pushed your graphics card too you're much to limit Loki. your fault, not ours. You're Just probably saying. Loki. Yes, you're hey, probably Loki. It, it's probably the Asus's <laughs> fault because hey, I did everything to help that laptop stay yeah. cool, and you, you know, had I, it a while though. If huh? it's, you had it a while. Well, it was used, so it was old, and it was infamous for, you know, overheating. But I did, like, you know, all sorts of cooling mods to it, increasing, you know, the airflow in it, um, you know, overclocking the fan, put, you know, new thermal paste on there. Um, but Titanfall was enough to kill it, so <laughs> I don't know. It's just, um, you got to be careful. The newer laptops, you know, have better cooling, but if you're really looking for, like, you know, Cut, like customizing a laptop or something like that. They actually do have places you can buy customized laptops. Um, there's like websites that'll actually do that. Very rare though, especially for laptops. Did our emailer say if they were on a laptop or not? Well, I, I haven't I missed finished that. the email. Oh, oh, sorry. And, but he did, by the way, say it was Regenerator. Um, and the second question, by the way, was what are those changes, so, which we've oh. already started answering. Um, as a side note, this is what I have. Um, an Acer Aspire uh, V5571, Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit, 4 gigabyte RAM, and uh, Intel Pentium CPU 967 at 1.3 gigahertz. Wow, that's old. That is yeah, old. and and I I know we've chatted on the show before, Rageinator, and I know you have to game on a budget and so forth. So I can't exactly just sit here and be all like, "Well, go get a new graphics card." <laughs> I understand why you really want to push the limits of what you have, but the reality is, technology upgrades fast. That's why we, you know, our consoles upgrade. That's why PCs are going up. If um, if you want to stay on the cutting edge of technology, you're gonna have to. I hate to say this, try to squeeze in to your already probably stressed budget a little bit, uh, how you're going to maybe upgrade your video card as, support, as opposed to maybe stretching what you've got. And a laptop, that would be damn difficult. Yeah, and a laptop, that's going to be really hard. If you were working with a desktop, I would say in a desktop, now here's the good news. You might be able to find something really good secondhand, like on eBay or something like that. I mean, I know you're taking your chances and so forth, but hear me Here's out here. You have a lot of people that are in a financial situation where they can buy the pick of the litter, the new newest thing, the hot new thing to play the hot new game. And they're going to sell off their old cards, which really aren't that old, that maybe you can benefit from. That's something that might be more appealing to somebody that's, that's working on a, a really extreme budget. But pushing what you have, do you really want to take that risk that you're going to overheat your system and really screw it up? Because then you're going to really be in a pickle. So I would say if you're at that point where you're saying, should I overclock to squeeze out just a little more performance? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually say, no, don't do it. You and if to- you're looking for like a custom laptop, look for, a, a, was it a Clevo? It's this company, they do custom laptops. And um, I think they're in Europe, but they may have them also in the U.S. as well. Um, yeah, I think they actually do have one in the U.S., a uh, ProStar. Um, but those would be the ones that you can literally, they customize everything. And so that's very unusual. Usually, you know, when you're like shopping like Dell or something like that, you're going to be very limited to a certain SKU and, you know, what you can upgrade and downgrade and that kind of stuff. Also, everyone in chat seems to be telling you Newegg. I have a better suggestion, and that's if you have a Fry's, take it to Fry's, have them price match Newegg, and you save shipping. (laughs) Nice. There's a little app. I'm going to advertise an app right now. It's called Shop Savvy. It will. Um, you scan the uh, the barcode of any pro- uh, any product, and it will pull up online and in store uh, retailers with all of their prices, the URLs to the item, so that you can take it up to anyone who price matches. Say this is the item. Have them search for it and go. Okay, yeah, we can give you that that deal. That's how I got um, when I bought my my Mass Effect three. Remember, mm-hmm. that's how I had a price match um, Amazon because I found it for thirty six bucks brand new instead of you know 50 something dollars and mm2k in our chat room brings up a good point that when you when you shop with new egg or fries which now some of our chatters are like oh yeah fries mm2k says better better chances building an ebay quote-unquote rig a lot cheaper and the risk is not that high that's a that's a really good point i i I can I can support that. And uh, Dungeon Buster points out, you know what? Amazon also has a few good hardware deals from time to time, surprisingly. So those comments from our chat room over at live.vognetwork.com. Again, to the emailer, Rageinator, don't feel like, I mean, when you see the price of new cards, you're going to be like, $200. You know, there's going to be some expensive stuff out there, but don't feel like you have to go 
the tip of the iceberg. Go to the models that are a year, a year and a half old. You might be able to find something for like 50, 50, 70 bucks. Who knows? Maybe even cheaper if you can really find somebody who's onloading a bunch of, uh, offloading a bunch of stuff. And it's going to be better than what you have now. And you know what? Check, check Craigslist anyway. You know, I actually like I was some fool might be giving it away for free. You take your chances. But I was just, you know, randomly hunting in uh, to see because I, I want a MacBook Pro. And someone was selling like um, one from a year ago for 550 bucks. I mean, it's already gone. But, you know, it was I was like, well, that's a good price. You know, yeah. you know, a lot of people clearing them out for maybe 900 to 1000. You know, I'm just using that as an example. But you can always find people selling off their old graphics cards. Well, good luck to you, buddy. Was that it for emails? Oh, well, there's one more. One more. Wow, you guys yeah. are filling up the mailbag this week at participate at orangelaunchradio.com. Um, hello. Hi. With the implementation of the new email address, I thought I'd ask about spam. Have you ever had spam? Do you like it? Do you cook with spam? <laughs> Do you have any good recipes involving spam? Spam, 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 spam. Stay black, red entertainment. This message was brought to you in part by Money Python. Ah. Uh. And my answer to that, I don't like spam. I think Jamie spam, put it best. Spam, 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 that was a great email. Yeah, I think we should change the mail address every week. We get great email segments when we do that. Not that they're all bad, but that, that was a particular, particularly great segment this week. All right. Uh, anyhow, let's move on. Uh, it's the FUs of the week time. Oh, now, now we're going to spam the airwaves with some angst. Get ready for it. F you to um, rashes. That's it. Loki. F you to uh, gaming sites taking secondhand knowledge from somebody that heard something else on some you know what, social media site. It's not a story. Well said. Um, my F you of the week goes to the, the stress that comes with moving. Although I'm sure everything will be okay. It's just one of those like, oh my God, I have to put everything in a box. Eh. But it'll be worth it. It'll so be worth it. Can't wait. All right. There it is. The FU's of the week, everybody. Uh, moving on, just a couple more stories for you guys. And then we're going to open up the Skype line at one eight seven seven game olr or our username on Skype, Orange Lounge Radio. But first, Loki. Yes, as we were talking about a little bit before, Twitch um, Plays Pokemon has concluded um pokemon red they after like i guess two weeks they finally uh defeated uh the end of the game there and uh now they've moved on to uh pokemon crystal so it's not over it still goes so is there like a helix uh fossil and crystal i mean because it's gonna be sad that crystal it doesn't move along there. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't remember that one at all. I watched a little bit of the feed today just to see, like you know, uh, how they're doing, and um, you know, game over. It was no. They were just they were running in and out of a house. No, but now it's game over. No, they're on crystal now. Oh, I meant I thought you were talking about the other one. No, 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 no. I I saw all the victory screenshots and so forth. But my favorite thing to come out of this Twitch plays Pokemon thing, honestly, it's so funny that last week I was so ignorant to a lot of the stuff that Logie was bringing up. But I read up on some of it, and I gotta say, like the fanfic and the culture that have come out of Twitch plays Pokemon is pretty hilarious. And if anything is gonna keep it going, it's gonna be that. But like seriously, there's like comics about Bird Jesus. Thank you, Jay Tumblr. Leno. Right? It is kind of Tumblr's fault. It's my people. <laughs> Tumblr, you guys are weird. But I say that with love. Mm. And L- Lord Helix. and <laughs> Yes. And what was that? Evie is the false prophet or something like that? Like, it was all this crazy shit. It's, it's hilarious. <laughs> uh, anyways, so some of the stats coming out from that. Um, it ran for 16 days, 7 hours, 45 minutes, and 30 seconds. 
it at its max it had 121,000 people um, watching. There was over 122 million commands issued in chat, uh, more than uh, 9 million onlookers and 36 million views, and they were saying total minutes watched more than 1 billion. That's ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Hey, great, great for them though. That's that's uh, Tw- Twitch TV's just sitting there counting the cash from all the ads and the subscriptions on that. Although, then again, that's a excuse me, that's a bandwidth bill. I'm not sure I'd want to have to pay for. They should do that with like a TV show or something where <laughs> they pick the outcome that way. Well, somebody in chat earlier, and I'm, I apologize. I don't I don't know who said this, but um, I just remember reading the comments. Somebody had said, "I I wish I would watch the Twitch." plays Pokemon channel on TV before I'd watch G4 again, something to that effect. And I was like, I'm kind of surprised somebody doesn't try to make like a TV show or something out of this. But I mean, we live in this age where the internet is making us rethink TV. This it is Twitch plays Pokemon is a TV show. It's just not on what you used to think of as TV. Just like you rent movies now, not by going to a blockbuster like you used to. It's just interesting. So uh, Jason says, I don't think Twitch Plays Pokemon had a subscription feature. Actually, they do, but they make very clear in their about that it's it, they're not going to give you special treatment, that it's just for, um, you know, you support what they're doing and, and want to help them out. You know, again, hey, if you've got a little extra money and like what we're doing, help us, you know, help help motivate me to do the next Pokemon game and program that before the, the next thing. <laughs> Tiger Claw in chat says, we need a Twitch Plays OLR. Hey, funny enough, go check this out if you haven't already. Um, Jason works very hard on posting the uh, shows up to YouTube every week. And uh, they run a week behind just because we want everybody to download through the traditional means. But for the archive folks, um, if you go look at episode 541 on YouTube, Jason did a hilarious intro that does incorporate the Twitch Plays uh, Pokemon thing into it. So uh, Tiger Claw, go check that out. It's funny. So there you go. Uh, one more story for you guys, and then I think we'll open up Skype at 1877 Game OLR, username Orange Lounge Radio. But before we get there, a rare game goes for over $3,000 on eBay. And what game are we talking about? It is actually an Ultima game. Yes, Ultima, as in that classic PC gear is series. But it was a rare side story game, which I have to admit, I've never heard of this. And I always thought I, I kind of knew my up and up on the Ultima games. But Ultima Escape from Mount Drash. Uh, It was originally on the Commodore VIC-20 from Sierra Online. The company produced no more than 5,000 copies. The first time it ever showed up since the 80s was in 2000, and uh, Peter O was a collector in 2004 that bought one for $3,605. He actually is the one who sold this recent one he was selling the copy uh it was the vic 20 cassette in a plastic case the instruction cards in the original box and uh he lost 500 bucks on the deal because uh three thousand fifty dollars is what it sold for so unfortunately the value went down uh incomplete copies meaning they didn't have the case or the card or things like that they sometimes go for like 675 dollars or more so uh, a very rare collector's item there, Escape from Mount Trash. Again, I had no idea that this was a thing. But this was back in the day when um, Lord British was, like, programming those games by himself. So this must have been something where it was, like, contracted out to Sierra or maybe – was it even maybe unauthorized? I don't know. I kind of want to look this up real quick. Are there any uh, classic, classic games, Jamie, that you would pay a lot of money for? Like, maybe not on this scale, but let's let's say you had that type of budget, Dark Sakura. Is there anything you would pay a shit ton of money for like that? I'd probably get, well, it's not worth that much, but I'd get Panorama Cotton. You know, it's a $600 game. Hmm. Um, th- which, actually, I think what it is is that they literally made, like, 500 copies of that game. So it's super rare. Um, not... There's not really a whole too many, you know. I'd pro- I might, you know, I might want to buy a copy of Emerald Dragon. Maybe that's it was a pretty good game. Uh, I got more information on what this game's all about. The uh, Ultima Escape from Mount Drash. Here's the deal: it wasn't rich- written by Richard Garriott, but it was by his friend Keith Zabalowi. I probably mispronounced that. I, I apologize to Keith for butchering his last name. But uh, he wrote this game in '83. Now Sierra had just put out Ultima Two, and so what they did, they stuck the Ultima prefix on this game, hoping it would sell better. 
uh, we've heard of this stuff happening before, right? Uh, one instance that comes to mind is that uh, Konami was uh, Team Silent was working on a game called The Room, and Konami was like, let's just call it Silent Hill 4. <laughs> so they kind of you know, had to put it into the Silent Hill canon. So, uh, you know, this happens a little bit in gaming sometimes. You get side stories that uh, get the, the series name stuck on it there. So it's a very old, old version of that happening. All righty, we are going to open up the Skype line, guys. It's time to call us and uh, have your say on tonight's topics. one eight seven seven game olr or our username on Skype, Orange Lounge Radio. The Skype line is open right now. Give us a call. While we wait for some calls to come in, um, Loki, I'll... Check with you. You have any last minute stories while I load up Twitter? I'm just watching. I, I don't really have any last minute stories, but I'm just watching my cat because I, like I said, installed a cat door in the garage door here, and she does not know how to go through it. She thinks it's a window. She's kind of like getting all frustrated. Like, why aren't you letting me out? She has hilarious. Under- she doesn't understand the concept. Huh? She doesn't understand the concept. No, she doesn't understand the concept yet. She is. I mean, she she doesn't know what it is. <laughs> All right, well, we are going to go to the phones, and let's go to it right now. Hi, you're on Orange Lounge Radio. Who's this? It's the dude with the fastest internet in the entire chat room, Rama. Hey, Rama, you are very good at getting into the show when you want to. What's up, buddy? Not much. I'm wondering to see if I actually have to work tomorrow because of the big and sudden snowstorm that's coming through. Do you guys have another freaking epic snowstorm coming your way? Yes, yes. Oh, my and, God. And now, here's the funny part. But I just said, I said on my Facebook earlier today. Now the fact that Frozen has won an Oscar, the amount of snow has dropped about sixty percent. Swear to God. Nice. You know what? I think Rama, you just need to let it go. Let it go. Rob, you know what? Fuck it all. <laughs> Fuck it all. <laughs> I just want to remind you, uh, Rama, I've been drinking a little bit here and there, so uh, if I'm a little um, crazy tonight. Want me to do a shot for you, buddy? Hell yeah, I do. Do you got something sitting right there you can take a shot of? What am I saying? Of course you have something right there you can take a shot of. Take a shot? I'm taking it straight to the head. <laughs> Sorry. The, oh, oh, my gosh. Uh, I'm trying to get a picture of it, but our Skype line's ringing off the hook. I can't. Like, the webcam keeps cutting out there. Damn it, I missed it. You got to do I another. Just- I'll do another screenshot of me taking a shot of sake, and I'll send it to you. Would you feel better about that? All right, fair enough, fair enough. Okay. <laughs> What's on your mind? I just called talking about the whole new egg, upgrading your older machines and stuff, because this is something I do on occasion and even now. Yes, it's harder to upgrade a laptop for gaming, but a desktop is not that hard. I mean, not for nothing, my last major upgrade was about – three years ago and I dropped out 300 bucks on a new video card motherboard and processor and it wasn't bad because you can get a pretty good video card for like 50 bucks mm-hmm. the really expensive ones are for people who really just want to eat sleep drink game that right. really technical aspect of it right and like I like I said about almost a month ago one of my hard drives crashed I went out and bought a new three terabyte drive Micro Center had it for 109 walked over to Best Buy, instant price match. Done. Nice. That wasn't bad. It's just, you just got to know where to look. And yes, even though Amazon does sell computer parts, just be careful. I've been seeing people selling like 80 and 120 gig hard drives for like 99 bucks and stuff like that. And well, I'm like... You get a lot of that reseller shit on Amazon, so you got to be careful that when you're buying from Amazon, you're buying from actual Amazon. Well, I mean, sometimes the resellers are okay, but do your research yeah. a little bit because you get a lot of that. Make sure if you want it to be, you know, still like sealed and all that, get it from actual Amazon. Like, if I really wanted to get a PlayStation 4 camera, not to like throw it back to a topic from a while ago, but I am, I could get one on Amazon, but it's going to be through a reseller for like, seriously, they're charging like 180 bucks for a camera that's supposed to be $50. Fuck. And what's interesting is that, like, last week I went, I finally got myself um, a DualShock 3. Amazon had it for 39 Price matched at Best Buy, but on the next ad down, a third party reseller was selling it for $35. Nice. So do your research a little bit, people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're in an age of an economic crisis. We have to save and pay people where we can. That's right. Yeah. Well, anything else on your mind tonight, buddy? Uh, no, that's it, brother. All right. Well, thanks so much, as always, for the call. And uh, Anime Jam Session Tuesdays here on the Voice of Geeks Network. And uh, Rama, also a playable character in Flappy Vogue. So yes, yes, yes. Check all that out. All right. Take care, my friend. 
Talk to you. All right, Later. bye. All right, one eight seven seven game OLR. Our username on Skype is Orange Lounge Radio. If you want to give our show a call, and I gotta say though, the uh, Skype line's ringing off the hook tonight. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough for some of you to get through, but we do have another call coming in, so let's get to it. Hi, you're on Orange Lounge Radio. Who's this? This is Bobby. Hey, Bobby, it's our friend Bobby Blackwolf. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. What's on your mind? So I called in because you guys completely glossed over the important part of a story earlier. Oh, like we never do that. Come on completely glossed over it, and I spent 20 minutes on my show talking about it's it. That's only, because everyone listened to you. It's only a three-hour show, Bobby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we might have glossed over it because it was something that you went, in, it went into more depth. We try, we try not to, to jack your style too often here right. at uh, our show, Bobby, but please, what do you, you want to go back and refocus on? But, but is King.com losing the candy trademark, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's misdirection. They mm. got rid of it because they don't need it anymore. They got that Candy Crusher trademark from 2004, so they don't need the Candy trademark, so they can do the good PR thing and have podcasts say, oh, this is a good thing. King is, the evil K is backing off. And they're not. They're just using a different, more effective weapon to bludgeon their enemies with. So so you don't think this, this like, they're going to let the Candy Swipe thing go without a fight, despite all of the negative press it's caused them? Because my thought no. was that they, they were, okay, so maybe they're relying on this other trademark, but maybe they're not necessarily, is this another one of the ones that they got from Europe? No, this was mm. one they got from a U.S. company. Because mm. I know it, part of the weird thing about trademark law here is that if you don't inf- try to defend it, you'll lose it. Mm-hmm. So maybe I, I don't know. Maybe they're trying to default to something that they don't have to be as aggressive in defending. I mean, I I'd like yeah. to give them the benefit of the doubt, even though I might be a little foolish in doing so. But now, yeah, I mean that that could be it. But I mean, it it, it is it was harder for them to take on candy swipe with a candy trademark that they're just getting right but the 2004 trademark yeah they can definitely use that to bludgeon their enemies with and even in and and, you know spoiler alert and you know behind the scenes stuff i actually can see olr show roll because i I run the website so i can see everything you don't see the finalized one though i don't see the finalized one but i see where you guys put all of it put all the stories and even the article that you guys used as a link has a statement from king stating we're getting rid of the candy trademark because we don't need it anymore because we got the candy crusher trademark. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they've even come out and said, oh, yeah, we're not stopping what we're doing. We just have a better way of doing it. Uh, Jason in our chat room says, uh, I dislike Black Wolf's tack on this. I think he meant take on this because they have the right to defend their trademark. The exception is, of course, that their game 2012 came out after someone else's 2010. As far as them defending their own game, I don't have a problem with it. I I don't have a problem with it either when people are making puzzle games involving candy that, like, literally step on the toes of what Candy Crush Saga is trying to do, like, with a very similar name. But, you know, we, we all heard the story about Banner Saga a couple weeks. Like, that, that, was, that was fuckery right there. Like, there was no re- – well, I mean, there was reason for it, but it was, it was a ridiculous reason. None of us agreed with that. And I think if a developer wants to make a game that happens to be about candy that otherwise has nothing to do with ca- – like – Let's say Milton Bradley wants to put out Candyland for the Xbox One using Kinect for, mm-hmm. you know, four- and five-year-olds to play, dancing like crazy in front of the Kinect or whatever. I, I think they should be allowed to do that. Yeah. and and that, But, I mean, and, and even Jason says, you know, if they use whatever 2004 game, take out Candy Swipe, that's that. That's exactly what they did. That's exactly how they got him to take down his game is that he was fighting their candy trademark, so they bought Candy Crusher, waved that around, and there was nothing he could do about it. And now they're like, oh, well, we don't need the candy trademark. Let's abandon it. Everybody will say, this is a good thing. And we'll just use Candy Crusher to, to do what we wanted to do initially because it predates all these other games that predated us. Well, well, fair enough. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us why this company is still evil. Yes. <laughs> and uh, t- just to be fair, we didn't exactly tell everyone it's safe to install Candy Crush Saga again. No. No. Uh, and uh, when you were discussing this on your show, that's when we were opening the wine. Sorry. No. And, but it is safe to install the Unity web player and go to flappy.vognetwork.com. <laughs> yes. Because Firefox had an update. I, this happened to me yesterday. And it's like this. It, 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 when I tried to load up the Unity player, it actually had like this big warning saying this, pol- uh, this plugin is vulnerable. So we've disabled it. That so happened just, to me too. Just, mm-hmm. So just upgrade it and it'll be fine. Yes. We are not trying to read the contents of your computer and what porn sites you may or may not be visiting and all that. Because I, I, God, no, I don't want to see that. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Uh, Bobby, quickly, please uh, plug your show for our audience. I, I have a hard time believing there's anybody out there listening to this that doesn't know of your show. But just in case, give us a quick plug, and then we'll let you go. Uh, it's Bobby Blackwell's show. I name it after myself, so Jay Leno, because he's unemployed right now. He doesn't take take over the show. Uh, it's 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, right here before OLR, and I even run long into OLR's time, and they graciously allow me to do that. And uh, I, I do Fog and, and, and Flappy Vog, which is over now. Joke's over. I'm going to move on now. The joke is over. Step away from the joke. But but at least experience Character Pack 2 a couple times before you step yes. away from it completely. All right. That's right. All right, Bobby, the man. Uh, take care, buddy. Good as always to hear from you. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. All right, one eight seven seven game O L R is the uh, place to give us a call or uh, our username on Skype, Orange Lounge Radio, all one word. And we're, there's a lot of calls coming through tonight. I'm going to try to get to them all, so uh, keep keep trying, guys. Sorry if you're not getting through right away, but it's it's a race of sorts. And the buffer that we have, similar to uh, what Twitch Plays Pokemon has, that whole like 45 second buffer, <laughs> makes it a, a very challenging type of game. So uh, once again, the phones are open. And let's see. I could try to go to, could try to go to the Twitters to take a topic. But I think, nope. We got a call coming in. Let's get to it. Hi, you're on Orange Lounge Radio. Who's this? Oops. Sorry. Try again. Hi, you're on Orange Lounge Radio. Who's this? Gamer girl. Hey, gamer girl. What's on your mind, my friend? Um, nothing much. Just uh, playing some uh, Lightning Returns. Some lightning returns. You know, we haven't talked a lot about lightning returns here on the show. Uh, what's up? Uh, how is lightning returns? It's really frustrating at first, but I learned that you could actually, um, if you don't complete the game like you're supposed to, you can actually replay it. Oh, right, because isn't isn't the whole little twist in lightning returns that, like, you have 13 days to do it, but if you screw up and you don't get things done, you can start back from the beginning, but it's like it's like a New Game Plus type of thing or something? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you First, you start out with, like, six days on the clock, mm -hmm. and then with each, um, I think it's called a seed that you add to the tree in uh, heaven, uh, it adds more time to the clock. Mm -hmm. Like okay. the more more days to the clock, and I'm already on day four, <laughs> and I just started playing yesterday. Nice. So yeah. it's kind of like is it kind of like um, uh, Zelda Majora's Mask, where it's like you know, seventy two hours remain and all that kind of that. Yes, same that's looming, exactly what it reminds me of. Looming doom. <laughs> is there a big <laughs> is there a big angry face moon in the sky that's about to, ex to hit the earth? Uh, not really, but it's a moogle. Pretty much, um, <laughs> you pretty much it's it's like the same thing exactly, because you have only a certain amount of days, like I said, and it gets really frustrating at first if you don't know how to do it. So, for those of you who want to buy the game or if you don't have it yet, I highly suggest getting the strategy guide because oh. you're gonna need it. <laughs> you're gonna need it. Uh, how how do you uh, how do you feel about Lightning Returns compared to other games in the Final Fantasy XIII series? Like, because I see Fifth Dream in our chat room over at live.vognetwork.com says, and I'm not sure how I feel about Lightning Returns at this point. Where are you at in comparison to the original thirteen? I feel so weird saying that the original Final Fantasy thirteen and then thirteen two. How how is it for you? The only thing I don't like is the fighting system mm -hmm. because you only have a certain amount of button presses before you can, you have to wait before your um. I don't know what it's called, but before it regenerates. Right. And um, as with the original Final Fantasy thirteen, the first ones, you could just press buttons and there's no um, there's no penalty for it. And also, there's a penalty system if you run away from your enemies. Unless you're playing on easy. But if you're playing on, like, normal, then you have a penalty system. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of frustrating. I'm like, oh! <laughs> Well, I guess there's got to be that's that's the challenge in the game. If they just handed it to you, that wouldn't be much of a game there. So, uh, yeah, sure. Fifth Dream says you lose an hour if you run. So, hmm, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What else have you been playing lately? Anything else you want to share with us? Um, Minecraft. <laughs> I've My been playing a lot of Minecraft. Have you been playing on the Vogue Network server? Um, I don't know what the server is for that one because I mean I'm playing on PS3, so I don't know if you guys are playing it that way. Oh, no, we're not on PS3. We're on PC. So, yeah, the P PS3 one doesn't let you connect to PC servers. Fingers crossed that maybe the PS4 one will, but I don't I don't know for sure if it will or not. 
We don't know much about the PS4 version. It should have so been out. I'm so mad now. about PS4. Ooh. So mad. Why? So mad. Why? Because one of my favorite games is not going to be on PS3. So I have to buy a PS4. What game which is, that? is I believe it's Kingdom the next Kingdom Hearts. Oh yes, I well. Could be mistaken, but no, well, you're that's right. That's to be expected anyway. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's, it, sequels True. are going to go to the next system. That's that's what happens. But just think of it. Pr- even prettier Disney characters. True. So I'm going to end up getting it anyways. I just have to wait for a price drop, which I'm going to be waiting for a while because I just got a Wii U. Right? Oh, not how are you liking the Wii U? I, I like it um, as far as like having to be able to watch TV and then game at the same time. I think that's really cool. Do you ever use that TV integrated thing so you can chat along with big events? Like probably they probably got one going for the Oscars right now. Um, it's not they, really. They don't talk I mean, about it at all. But it's... I do use the chat feature because that's oh, how okay. Dark Su- Dark Tetsuya and I keep in touch. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, little, little Wii U video. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, Gamer Girl, uh, thanks so much for sharing your thoughts on Lightning Returns, a game I haven't gotten around to yet. Appreciate it. And uh, good luck. I hope you're able to beat the clock. All right. Thanks. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right. We are uh, going to try and take a couple more calls. We finished, uh, we finished news and stories and things a little bit uh, early tonight, so we still have some time to take a few more calls. So one eight seven. Do you have a last minute story? Please go ahead. Try to get it in quick before. Oh uh, no, nope, free- too late. Too late. We got another call coming ah. in, Loki. You can uh, you can do your story after this call, but we do have another call on the line. Hi, on Orange Songs Radio. Who's this? He could have totally done his story, and I would have waited. <laughs> well, then, okay. Is hi, it- Shane. Hi, Shane. How are you? I'm fine. All right. Well, then, Shane, would you please sit there patiently, Loki? Yes. Uh, so real quick, um, Inter- Interceptor. Um, you know, the guys that did the Rise of the Triad reboot, they've um, acquired uh, Apogee Software, who owns 3D Realms. Oh. Apogee? Uh, Apogee, whatever. You know, I, I don't care. <laughs> you, grammar me all you want. I just don't care. <laughs> so what do you think this means for the future of... Uh, well, uh, do they still... Does 3D Realms still have, like, the Doom and Doom 4 and all that, or...? Um... Well, 3D Realms had Duke Nukem, but they sold that IP, so hmm. I don't know what they have anymore. All right. All right. Well, anyway, back to the phone. Thank you for waiting so patiently, Shane. What's on your mind tonight? You're welcome. Um, first of all, just a message to Ranma. Have fun with this new storm. It's supposed to get below negative 20 here tonight. It's already negative 14 right now. Like so it's, it's really fun. It's negative 14 where you are? Mm-hmm. Gross. I can't even imagine. I was bitching about it being 30 something. I know. I love you, California. <laughs> I went I'm to okay visit it, the snow and snow. then I left. You said you're okay with it, what? Because we got snow. So there you go. I love snow. It's Christmas. Um, yeah, it's kind of like Christmas, except everybody already took down their lights because they're dumb. <laughs> What'd you I really call in s- to talk about? I called in to talk about that I have now stepped into the year, I think it's like 2001, and I'm finally playing Kingdom Hearts for the first time for real. Wait, you've never played Kingdom Hearts before? I played it when it first came out for like half a second, and I hated the camera. Like, I thought it was mm. the worst thing ever, so I quit playing. And now I'm going through the uh, PS3 version, and I still kind of hate the camera, but it's not as bad as it was, but... Man, that game's not a lot of fun sometimes. Well, I was gonna say they did—they did fix it up on the PlayStation Three version. I—I I seem to recall. So it's—is it a little better than what you remember? Yeah, the camera's a little better than what I remember, but I still—the game is not grabbing me yet. I don't know how long it's supposed to take before it does. Because first of all, David Boreanaz can't act worth a crap, so. <laughs> He needs to not be in any of the other games, but, I hope. But that's perfect for Squall, because Squall's kind of... Uh, I'm Squall. I mean, But see, Leon. even your impression of what Squall should be is far better than what David Boreanaz is putting out in that game. Like, Maybe Jamie should release like her own voice thing that people could patch into the game. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I, would, I would use that for David Boreanaz. It's cool. Can you give us another Squall line, Jamie? I have a gun blade. There you go. <laughs> Way more interesting. How far are you in the game? Just out of curiosity. I just beat the Wonderland world, okay. which that boss sucked. Yeah. I literally I hate the fought him level. for three hours last night. Yeah, that guy is kind of a jerk. Yeah, I, I remember that boss. It's like the big, it's the big, uh, like you go back into that room with the eat me, drink me stuff. And it's like a huge, like weird amalgamation of the chairs and stuff, right? Yeah. And then like I was 
trying to kill him, and I was like, maybe I could use some fire on him. Oh, wait, that turns his baton on fire, and it just kills me quicker. Yeah. It was uh, so frustrating, but now I'm on the Coliseum world, so I'm hoping it gets a little better. Well, it's, I, I, I am going to say this. I kind of think Kingdom Hearts 2 was a better game, but I still love Kingdom Hearts. The Tron level will piss you off at first, though. <laughs> I mean, just doing the light cycle part would piss you off. Yeah. I just want to play Tron Legacy, but I know that's in the 3DS one. It's in the 3DS not, one. Not in any of the ones that I have access to right now, so kind of sad about that, but that's okay. Well, welcome to 2001, Shane. Thank you. And you're playing an MMO? Oh my god, I'm about to graduate high school. That's amazing. You're playing an MMO from 2001 as well, aren't you? <laughs> I actually am, yeah. I am right now playing Final Fantasy XI because I absolutely love this game and all the changes they've made to it. It's fantastic. Not 14, mind you. 11. 14. 11. Yes. Now, I am a dancer in it. It's the best. You have been trying and trying and trying to convince me. You're trying to use those powers of yours to make me come back and play Final Fantasy XI. So far, I'm resisting, though. I'm no, no, no. You have started to give in because you said maybe after the move. I said maybe, just to mm -hmm. shut you up. That's all I needed. <laughs> you're, you're too late. I, I was back in it for like a month. Yep. When I was free to play, like maybe. I was in it for like a month earlier too, but I, Shane is convinced that it's it's all of a sudden so much better than that. Okay, quickly, Shane, you may not be able to 100% convince me, but convince Jamie, convince the listenerships. Why? No. No, I have to pick and choose my targets. <laughs> I'm already two operating systems since the last time I touched that game, and I swore I would never go back, and I'm a stubborn bitch. All right, but you, you got to try for me, Shane. What? Why? Why is Final Fantasy XI cool now? Because you don't have to play with anybody. You've got this system that's not unlike Guild Wars where you have these NPCs that come fight with you and you make a mini party. And I seriously, in the past two hours, gained like eight levels. And that's eight higher levels. I went from 42 to... I'm just below 50. And if you've ever played Final Fantasy XI before, you know that's not an easy feat. Yeah, I think after like three years, I got to like maybe level 54 on one of my classes. <laughs> Yeah, uh. so it's just, it's so accessible. That's what's nice about it. And you apparently don't really even have to buy gear mm -hmm. until you get into the 90s because they raised the level cap to 99. They did uh, They did put higher textures out for Final Fantasy XI at some point, right? Did they? I thought they did. Um, I don't think they did. Yeah, no. I don't think they did. I wanna, I'd want to play it if the textures were much nicer and it looked... I looked just like registry edited it. That's mm -hmm. what I did. All it right. looks way better than normal. We'll see, but uh, again, after I move. It's all, all right. right. You're gonna that's not be yes. playing Final Fantasy XI once uh, Chroma comes out, anyway. So. Ooh, that's kind of true. I want that game so bad. I'm it very is jealous. So of the alpha. good. Oh, Loki! I want you to tell me more. But he can't. I want to see it. Make like a private YouTube. All right. We <laughs> we should probably talk about this offline. But for, uh, for now, Shane, anything else before we let you go? Nope. It's just really cold. All right. Well, uh, put a jacket on. Mm, I have a hoodie. All right. Bye, Shane. Bye. One eight seven seven game O L R. If you want to give us a call or our username on Skype, Orange Lounge Radio. I'm going to try to squeeze in one more call because I've seen one more caller coming through. I want to make sure I at least get the one other call, and then I'll probably shut it off for tonight because I usually only do about three calls, but tonight I've done six. But that's because our show um, was running a little short. The news went by quick tonight. So, um, did you have any other last minute stories you cooked up, Logie? I still get to get to Twitter. No, no, I haven't. All right. Oh, here's that call. We're going to go to it and uh, take this call, and then this will be the last one for tonight. Hi, you're on Orange Launch Radio. Who's this? Hey, guys. It's Jason. Hey, Jason. How you doing? Unlike everybody else in the polar vortex and uh, snow of doom, I made it home. You made it home. It's good to hear from Shockingly. you in your uh, Colorado studio as opposed to here in the studio with us. Well, tonight... Almost. I was, I was actually at a con this weekend, so I'm actually... Uh... I'm actually at a hotel, and I'm hoping the oh. internet holds up for the call, but close enough to home. I'm actually, so you know, so driving distance with uh, reasonably so. Nice, and you. Uh, I will have you know that in your chair, which was Loki's chair at one point, but and he'll be back at some point. Uh, but tonight, uh, hosting the show, you know, last week was my copy of Bravely Default. Tonight is Jamie. <laughs> tonight is Jamie's glass of wine. My empty <laughs> glass of wine. <laughs> All right. You didn't call us to talk about booze, though. At least I don't think so. What's on your mind, Jason? Um, I kind of just wanted to point out something when I was doing the video yesterday. Uh, a friend of mine called me towards the end of the show last week, so I missed the discussion on this topic. Um, 
I'm not, so, and, and this will probably shock quite a few people, but I'm not so sure that the whole Netflix Comcast thing is a net neutrality concern. Mm. Um, because there were follow-ups that happened over the course of this week. So obviously, you know, additions since we first, since you guys first talked about it on the show. Um, I'm, I'm a Comcast subscriber. I use Netflix regularly. I never saw these problems, and people have been talking about them being problems for the last... I don't know, year and a half and worsening over that period of time. And there was an article that came out this week that even people, people that use Netflix on their desktop see these problems. People that use a connected device, more specifically an Apple TV, like I do, never saw these problems whatsoever. Um, and this article pointed out that Netflix sends, for whatever reason, they send Apple TV streams via a different pipe. Um, the short version of this story is that everybody on the internet has, you know, it always boils down to one big backbone. If people want to look at what I'm talking about real quick, go to internethealthreport.com and you'll see a grid of all of the major cross network, uh, providers in the United States specifically. Um, and there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. If you are talking one network to another, you switch across one of these networks. These people do, you know, they don't do gigabytes. They don't do terabytes. They do petabytes of traffic a day. Wow. Um, That's a lot of bytes. (laughs) Well, it's not exabytes or yottabytes, so we're getting there eventually. Um, But it's it's one of those things where... um, like Comcast was painted as the villain because a lot of people like I I I, I derive uh, I say bad things about Comcast from time to time too uh, for for you know better for worse for well, I, I think also in general Jason I think people aren't happy about the large market share they're about to have because I think we sort of see competition as a little bit of a good thing and there's also been a lot of talk lately about is the internet a utility. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we saw a case, you know, many years ago when, uh, what was it, Bell or whatever was taking over so much of the country when it came to the phone utility, the government actually split them up. Yeah. And so we're starting to kind of ask that question, shouldn't the internet be considered a utility at this point? And I, I, I'm actually one of those people that's kind of like, I, I think it is. I think we live in a society that necessitates the internet. And I don't, like, I don't disagree with any of this. I don't like the state of broadband in America. The fact that we do have one cable choice, one DSL choice at best, and in like 60% of the country less than that. I, you know, by no means am I saying that's a bad thing. I'm just, I'm just basically, I basically just wanted to make the point that Netflix did this for a specific business purpose to better their service for people because the route that they have to take to get to Comcast subscribers for one medium desktops was terrible and they chose not to leverage the other links that they do have, except for one source of video. Like I said, the fact that Apple TVs never exhib- uh, exhibited these problems like desktop viewing did. So there's there's a lot more to this story than just Comcast constraining and fucking over Netflix. Um, you know, maybe maybe Netflix made the right decision. They didn't want to oversaturate other links, but. There's a lot more to it. This is a this sure, is a sure. really big story that just doesn't distill into well, Comcast fucked up again, so let's <laughs> let's deride them for the next five minutes and then move on. Uh, that that's basically all I wanted to get out as soon as I heard you're, it editing the video. You're just saying that there's more to this, and a lot of people are kind of jumping to conclusions, and I think that's fair because in the gaming world, especially, I mean, I know this is a little more tech, you know, it's a little higher a little higher on the bubble than 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 gaming. But um, we tend to, in this industry, jump to conclusions all the time. I'm guilty of it. We're all guilty of it. Um, we sometimes jump to conclusions. So you're just saying, you know what? Look, look beneath the service. There's a little more to it. Yeah. There's, this is a, a big, incredibly complicated thing, not only to the U.S., but the wider Internet at large. Fair and um, it's fascinating when you, di- when you dive into it. You just have to find the medium to be able to do so. All right, fair enough. Uh, you might want to link that in our chat room, that website you just gave too, because Bonds006 says, anyone got the site? I don't have it. I'm, I'm assuming that's the one you gave out. I don't know, but uh, check in on that on chat if you will. J- Jason, I'm going to let you go so we can wrap up the show, but miss you, buddy. Hope to see you soon. Have I hope a you good had night. fun. Oh, uh, somebody else was asking, what what con are you at? It was it was Anime Land Wasabi. There it is. Obviously, it started on Friday. I got in here the day before, and uh, I'm out of here first thing in the morning. Did Life you... returns to normal all over again. Did you do any music mixing? 
the show? No, I, I was just attending with friends. Nothing, oh. nothing particularly exciting this time around. That's fun too. Most, mostly because I didn't know if I was going to be back in town in time for it. So you, you know, didn't want to commit. But to I did. I made it. It was, it was exciting. All right, glad to hear you had a good time. All right, buddy, we will uh, talk to you soon. Take care, and thanks for all you do for the YouTube. Take care, buddy. Yeah. All right. Jason, everybody here on the phones, and I think that is going to do That was six calls. That was plenty enough. I really want to thank everybody, though, for taking the time to um, call in tonight. And if for whatever reason you didn't get through, maybe there's somebody else calling who I didn't see their name. Uh, sorry that you were not able to get through, but please uh, send us an email to participate at orangelaundradio.com, or you can send us a tweet, twitter.com slash OLR. I'm going to quickly go through some tweets here. Um, so we can wrap up the show because we're after nine o'clock, but I do want to at least get a couple of these tweets out of the way because I know Dark Soccer wants to go home and get all rested up for work tomorrow and Loki wants to tend to the fam. Oh, yeah, I do got work, but you know what? Come on, Twitters. I more just wanted to wear my shoes. Just to no, my, the bottoms of my feet. Uh -huh. My arches were sore uh -huh. from um, wearing my snow boots. Mm -hmm. And actually wearing my uh, tennis shoes is making it feel a bit better. Okay, I'm going to – my it won't come up on my iPad, so I'm – oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, just in the nick of time. There it is. All right, so I'm going to quickly go through some of these. Um, ActDef sends his tweet. Uh, my Little Pony Fighting is Magic Tribute Edition is released by fans. Note, this is not done by Main6, the original devs. Um, and this is the whole thing where they, you know, they had to end up changing it and the creator of My Little Pony was going to help him out anyway. No surprise that the internet kind of did its thing and put it out anyway, despite the legal wishes and so forth, especially in a rabid fan community like, uh, My Little Pony. But, um, hope it's fun. But I would, I would still be looking forward to, you know, what's the new game going to be that comes out of this? What, what comes out of the ashes with that? So... It's like it reminds me of that, uh, you know, that Chrono Trigger re remake that Square shut down. It ended up on the Internet anyway. Um, ActDeft also says Ultra Street Fighter 4 will add Edition Select. So you can choose which version of your character to use. Notice that's Edition, E-D-I-T-I-O-N, not like 1 plus 1 is 2. So uh, you can actually choose. Do I want to play regular, championship, or so forth? Because there's so many Street Fighter 4s at this point. Sheesh. All right, uh, some other tweets we got. Uh, SSG100 Matt tweeting us. In a recent homebrew coding competition, someone remade Castlevania in ZX Spectrum graphics. That's awesome. You know, though, the original Castlevania was actually on um, Commodore 64. It might have been, was it Vampire Hunter that they released it? Because wasn't that the original arcade? It was Vampire it was Hunter. MSX. Or yeah. MSX. So the fact that it's on ZX Spectrum, not a total reach, but still very cool. I love the D makes. Did you see Flappy Bird on the Commodore 64? No. Hilarious. And, of course, I love, love, love. I'm bringing this up again. Super Hexagon on Commodore 64. Awesome. Uh, there was a couple other tweets earlier in the week. Uh, Eric RPG had sent us a tweet about, uh, about a game that's being made that's inspired by F-Zero. I'm going to see if I can bring up this link real quick here. It's a racing and shoot 'em up hybrid that's being made. And it's got F-Zero influences. And let's see. It is a top-down racer with F-Zero influences. It's called The Next Penelope, inspired by Ridge Racer Type 4. Hmm, kind of interesting. You can check that out at IndieGames.com if you want to uh, see more information on that game. And uh, Flacco Jones also sent us a tweet saying, this might be interesting for your show. And, uh, oh, yeah. I, I remember reading this link. Uh, this, let me read the headline for you from AV Club. 0.15% of mobile game players account for half of all in-game revenue. In other... I don't know. This stupid website has an ad on it. But anyway, so I can't read much more than that headline. But uh, yeah, 0.15% is generating half of the revenue for these games. I'm actually not surprised by that whatsoever. There's just... There's some people that pump all this money into games and you kind of go like, is that what you're going to spend your money on? But you know what? It's up... It's up to somebody how they want to spend the money. Uh, last but not least, uh, Tech2030 wants to give a shout-out to a Kickstarter project uh, called Koe. K-O-E. I hope I didn't mispronounce that, but it's, a, it's an introduction to the Japanese language. Oh, well, shit. This is a game I probably need to play. Sounds like it's in the uh, shell of a Japanese RPG, but it actually teaches you the Japanese language. Sign me up. 
That's uh, similar to Final Fantasy and Pokemon. Hold on, I'm trying to see. It's actually out of the UK as well. It's being raised in pounds. But um, if you have zero experience with the Japanese language or you are well-versed and looking for... God damn it. It is Koei, by the way, because it says there. Uh, if you are well-versed and looking for a supplement for your studies or just want to play a JRPG for old time's sakes, this is for you. Well, shit, sign me up. Maybe I'll actually pronounce some of the games correctly in future weeks. You're getting better. I'm getting better. I think I think uh, Akuma JP was complimenting me as well, which is a very nice compliment. At least maybe I'm sounding like a kindergartner at this point. Remember, A-E-U-A-O. A-E-U-A-O. Mami, mu, me, mo. A-E-I-O-U. Just kidding. How about this? Baka. <laughs> All right. Uh, you can search for that over on uh, Kickstarter if you want to see it for yourself. K-O-E. Or it seems like somebody in chat just linked that. So there you go. All right. That is going to do it for another episode of Orange Launch Radio. That's it for tweets. That's it for emails. That's it for phone calls. Thank you guys so much for participating with the show tonight. Lots of great participation tonight. But we are going to wrap it up uh, and uh, say goodnight. Um, before we get ev get around to everybody's final thoughts, I want to give another thank you. Thank you for downloading and supporting the show. And if you like what you hear here at Orange Lounge Trader, remember, we're not asking for your money. We're just asking for your word of mouth. Tell a friend or two or five about the show and help spread the word about Orange Lounge Radio. Uh, would really appreciate it. It goes a long way to help grow our family and get more people here on very tough nights, like when we're going up against the Oscars. And uh, if you don't have a lot of friends to tell, we really appreciate, or if you do have a lot of friends to tell, we still appreciate five star reviews on websites like iTunes and Stitcher go a long, 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 long way. So we really appreciate those as well. Uh, it is that time, though, where we go around and get everybody's final thought. Loki, we miss you. We hope to see you back in studio soon, but I understand. Um, over Skype tonight, your final thought. Uh, my final thought is I think I won my Oscar pool. Oh, really? Yeah, I got everything. I think I, I, I don't remember a couple of them, but I got, as far as I remember, everything correct except for animated short, which was a tiebreaker question on our, our list. So I think I may have won. Well, at least that'll be some good news at work tomorrow, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dar Sakra, your final thought tonight. I think I need to take some Benadryl because my lip is swelling in a very odd way. I hope you're not, I hope you're not allergic to the wine. No, I'm not allergic to the wine, but um, I ate some things tonight that I haven't eaten in a long time. Uh -oh, and one of them might have had peppers in it. Uh-oh. So. Uh, hey, Alan, do we have Benadryl? Have oh, you have some? Okay. Thanks. Phew. All right, and uh, my final thought is... Um, I don't really have a lot, so I'm just going to say stay healthy. Stay healthy and, and stay, stay cool, everybody, because you guys are great for listening to this entire show, and you're all just really cool. So that's it, guys. We're going to wrap up and say goodnight. Thank you for listening to Orange Lounge Radio. We'll see you again next week. Good night. You've been listening to Orange Lounge Radio. Orange Lounge Radio is a production of OLR Studios. To join us for a live show, tune into VogNetwork.com Sunday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. The views and opinions expressed in this program do not necessarily reflect those of the staff of Orange Lounge Radio or Vog Network, but you know they were all still true. See you next week. <laughs>